So before we jump into retopology, there's one thing that we need to do first, and that's create our ID mask. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. It will be very easy to understand what it is once we get to the texturing stage. But it does require some setup. So first we're going to be creating a new save. I'm going to call this zero underscore ID. I'm calling this zero so it's on top of the list. I'm going to save. So what we need to do is we need to add different colors to different elements that we want to be able to select in text string. So that sounds kind of complicated, but if we simplify it, everything that we want to be able to select just gives that a different color. So for example, the cloth needs a different material from the armor, which is gonna need a metal color. So all the cloth will give a red color. Now we go to all the metal. Let's give all the metal a green color. Try to keep the colors as separate, as far apart from each other as you can. Also, let's break down the layers. Then all the bolts. They're going to be a metal as well, but maybe I want this metal to be a little bit different in value. Let's give this a yellow color. Then all the leather. I'm going to be selecting the top ones. Also, I merge these together because I quickly make a move of camera. With all the tops, I want to be able to select, so I'm going to give this a blue color. Then all the rough leather parts, I want to be able to select separately from the top leather, so I'm going to give this a pink color. And then our caps, I want to be able to select them separately from the cloth. So let's give this a different color as well, let's go with an orange color. Now we have everything set up properly. So I'm going to move the cloth a little bit to create a nice shape. Also I'm going to take down all those layers. That looks a little bit better. Now that we have this done, I'm going to create a save as and save the ID. So now we can get rid of our low poly bolts. Let's go ahead and delete them and we can get them back from another file when we need them. Now we're going to create a decimated version of this mesh to bake it down. Because baking 60 million polys is going to be difficult, so we need to lower our poly count. The way we do that is very simple. We go to C plugin, decimation master. Make sure to use and keep poly paint turned on. And then we can just click pre-process all. This will take a while, so take a break, get something to eat or drink, and come back to your computer in a bit. If you have a lot of polys and a slow computer, this can even take up to an hour. So just let it run until it finishes. So it's done. So what's, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna decimate all. And here we're gonna set the percentage of the poly count. So right now we have 60 million. So then it would take 20% of 60 million, which will be 12 million in total. So you can go quite low, but the lower you go, the, the less resolution you have in the bake. Although most of the times you don't really see the difference. But I like to go with something like 40%. Because I think it lowers it enough while remaining high poly enough. So now we can just click decimate all. That will take some time as well, although it will be a lot faster than your pre-process all. I accidentally decimated on not the highest subdivision. So I can just go back in history for this piece. And then we can pre-process current and decimate current to get this down to 40% as well. But before we do that, we should make a new save. I'm going to call this zero decimated. So now that we have the poly count way lower, it's good enough to bake. 
but we cannot read poly charts on such a high poly count because Maya is not as good in handling polys as ZBrush is. So now we need to further decimate this to use in Maya. And since we're only going to be using this to read apologize on, we're not going to bake this mesh, we can go quite low. So I'm going to be putting this at 10%. I'm going to do another decimate all. And still a little bit high, around 2 million. So I'm going to go down even more to 4%. You do want to be careful with certain parts that they don't become too low. For example, the caps. You can go ahead, keep that a little bit higher. Don't check things. For example, the bolts, we won't be re apologizing because we already have the low, so we can delete this. This became super low as well, so I'm going to go back on decimation. Maybe even a little bit more. I'm gonna pre process again. I'll try to decimate this, see if it works. That's working fine. Something like 50k is better. The general rule is that you want to try to go as low as you can without losing any shape. At this point, we can lose details, but I don't want to lose any shape. This is probably the lowest I will go for that one. Let's try 1% for this one as well. And that looks fine as well. So this is going to be a lot more reasonable to work with. The next step, I'm going to be merging the pieces that I want to re apologize together in one piece. So for example, all the cloth should be one mesh. I'm going to take all the cloth pieces. This one's still quite low. So I'm going to redecimate that, but a bit higher. You know, like that. I'm just going to go ahead and merge down all the cloth. Just like this. Then this already all one piece. That's good to go. Same for this. Although this can become a little bit difficult because it's going to be more difficult to hide certain parts. Which sounds a little bit confusing, but you'll see once we read apologize. So it's going to be easier to separate this out into different pieces. Hidden. And split. Hidden. It's going to make it a little bit more simple because we will be able to see the back pretty easily. Now that we have all the pieces set up, we're going to do one more save. We've got this DTL. We can call this 01 decimated for Maya or whatever software you're going to use. I'm going to delete the name holder. And lastly, we need to make an export of all these subtools. So we can go to C plugin, subtool master. And first, let's name these pieces actually. Let's just call this leg, armor, front, armor, belts. Loads. And finally, we have the chest armor. Then we go to C plugin. We go to the tool master. We click export. That all looks fine. Now we can just hit OK. Make sure you have it on OBJ. I'm going to create a new folder called Maya. Call this low. I'm going to create one more folder called meshes. 
decimated meshes. Now over here we're gonna export. We're gonna rename this to an underscore and then just hit save. This is gonna go ahead and export all our subtools to OBJ. That's it. For the rest, we don't need to do anything else in ZBrush, so we can head over to Maya. For Maya, there's a few things we need to do first. Make sure that you have the display, heads up display, and poly count enabled. Then you can save the preference so you don't need to do it every time. Because we're gonna need to see how many triangles we're adding. Then we're gonna go to File, Import, and we're gonna select our export meshes. So we can just select all of them. Actually, we can. Copy this path, open an explorer, then just select all and drag them in. Now we have our decimated mesh in Maya. Do a quick check if everything looks okay. It's gonna look too low and that all looks fine. So the first thing I like to do is turn this thingy off, it's just add it. Then we're going to take everything right here. I'm going to group this together. Then we need to do one thing. You can see the naming looks kind of off. We go general editors, namespace editor. And we click on all that. Quickly rename. That should be part of the plot. I guess we forgot to merge it. It's okay, we can merge it in Maya. We'll be starting off with an empty custom shelf. Create a new shelf by going here, new shelf, and create a new one. Just gonna put it on empty. And the first thing we need to do when we merge stuff together is delete by type history. So if we control shift click this, we can add it to our current shelf and we can just click it and you'll delete the history. If you don't know what history is, don't worry too much about it. Just for now, know that we need to delete it sometimes. Let's call this clock. You can rename stuff by just double clicking on the name. Let's call this chest. Belts. Legs, back, and finally we have the clock. So I'm going to select the clock first, and then the other one. Now, if we combine this, it will remain with the clock name, and we just remove the one. It's adding the one because you cannot have multiple objects with the same name in Maya, as you can see. So if I try to call this chess, it actually lets me because it's not part of the group. But if I were to put this here, call this chess, you'll see that it will add a one. So then we're going to turn on anti-aliasing. This will make Maya look a little bit nicer. We're also going to go to render, viewport, click that little box thingy. And put the anti-aliasing at 16. If I zoom in, it can maybe be a little bit easier to see what it does. You can see these edges look quite jacked. They're not nice and smooth. You can see how that looks jacked. Maybe it's a bit hard to see in the recording though. But once you press this, Maya is gonna look more beautiful. Then let's call this, let's add this back to our group. Let's call this group high. In high poly, then we're going to do another group, and you group by hitting Ctrl G, by the way. We're going to call this a day group. Then we're going to deselect the day group, hit Ctrl G to create an empty group, and we're going to call this a low. Now we put this in the day group, put the high on top, then in layers, we're going to create a layer from selected. I'm going to call this high. 
the ULC, we have an object named hi and we cannot have a duplicate name. So we're gonna add a suffix for layer called LIR for layer. So now if we click the V, we can hide all the objects in this group. It's gonna be very useful. Now we're gonna do the same for the low. Create low. Play from selected and call this a low. And I'm gonna click the black color to get a black wireframe. Nothing will happen yet when we hide it because the group is empty. But let's say if we create cube, we add this in the low group. You see now that we can hide that. Now I'm gonna delete that cube. Let's make a save. I'm gonna call this low. And for now, that's all the setup that we need to do. So let's get started. To start off, we're gonna be working on the armor. So all that we need to do is we need to go here to this little magnet icon and click it. Now you will see that we cannot select it anymore. I'm gonna go to the other ones. I'm gonna hit Ctrl H as in hide. And that's gonna hide all the other models. So now we're gonna be starting off our retopology. One important thing is that we only need to retopologize one side and then we can mirror it over to the other side after we're done. <laughs> now a common mistake to avoid is to start your retopology off kind of like this, that you start very small and you work your way through it because this can take a long time. What you want to do instead so you want to work from big shapes to small shapes. So what that means is we can just set a point over here, do another point here, maybe a point here and a point here, and we're going to be working with very big quads. Now you can see we blocked out that armor piece very fast. Also this can be a little bit difficult to see what you're doing since everything has this blue color. So what we can do, also to, to make a point, just click on the mesh, that's with the magnet, and then hold shift in between the points to create that quad. And on a quick side note, I do really prefer doing retopology with the Wacom tablet. I think it's good. A lot easier and faster than navigating with the mouse. It's a personal preference, do whatever works for you. But just want to share that working with the mouse can be pretty nice for retopology. Now, if you go over an edge or point and you hold down shift, you can relax that to smooth out the topology, kind of like we were doing with the polish by features to make that topology nice and even. So to make this more visible, we can go here to the hammer icon and go life constraint options. First we lower the mesh alpha. Then we're gonna brighten this color up a little bit. Now for the wireframe overlay, I do like to use a very light blue color. Something like that looks pretty nice to me. So we can just go ahead and block this topology out very quickly by working with big bodies. Now we got everything blocked out. We need to start refining this a little bit more. So the first thing I'm thinking is we can add those little angle changes that we did. And I'm holding down control over an edge to insert an edge loop. Okay, control. And then we need to readjust the points to fit properly. And sometimes it won't let you move a point. That means it will be inside surface. If that happens, just go into vertex mode. Hold down W and go to component. Then you can move it up to go into the surface. I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to turn life off so I can push this in the surface. Now if I go to Quattro, 
you will see that it doesn't snap on the surface, it's snapping to the back, which can be very annoying and frustrating. Like that. You see that I cannot select it because it's underneath our life surface. So then you go like vertex and pop it up, and then you'll be able to move it again. <laughs> Also, when doing retopology, I recommend turning history recording off. So that's this one. I'm going to take this mesh and delete the history. So this is our history. It will remember everything we did with that retopology tool. Once you get like a thousand in the list, it will become very slow. So we can avoid that by just turning off history altogether. Or you could just delete the history once in a while. So you can see that I'm working on all the plates together at the same time. Now here we cannot make a loop because it doesn't loop. So we need to force a loop with the multi-cut. We can just click on the edge where we want the point to be and then we can slide it on the edge. Just like that. And with Quattro we can select one point and drag it to the other point to merge them together. Something like that. That's an extra loop. So sometimes it won't let you control drag. If that happens, you can go to multi cut, hold down control, and we can put that in. But now you'll see, we try to mess with these points. We can't because they're underneath the surface. So we hit W, we select the point, and we put that point up. Now we'll be able to. Smooth that out nicely. So I'm going to add some extra resolution. I'm going to work a little bit on the flow, the polish. You can also select multiple points. So we can select the first point and double click the last point. That will select all the points in between and then we can all move them together. It's going to be a little bit faster. At this point, I'm just looking for a nice flow of the polygons. Trying to even out the resolution everywhere. Here, I'm going to select the first point and then the last point by double clicking and then just moving that and that will snap them all to the surface. And then we can adjust those points multi-cut to connect that edge up edge and delete that one by hitting the backspace key and i'm not too convinced on the poly flow it's going to bring some weird shading what i want to do is have this flow over here and have this flow like this and then over here it can start to branch off in the flow so we can multi-cut this like that. Now we need to cut over there. And we can take this edge, delete it. Do the same here. So now if we look at the poly flow, the edge loop is going like this, which is a little bit better. But over here, we need to make sure it flows like that. Again, what we can do, multi-cut. Cut a little bit, delete that, hold on Ctrl Shift and click an edge to delete it. Now you can see we have a nice flow. Though I do want an extra loop in between here, I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to be cutting that up until here. Now we can put an extra loop here. One thing that's very important, it's the edge flow on your models. When we're doing something like armor, it doesn't matter too much since it won't deform. So I'm just trying to look for a clean mesh. The only thing that's important in the poly flow is going to be the shading. We'll talk about what shading is later. And the other important part is that we keep an even resolution of polygons. 
So right now here we have a nice big square, but next to it we have a, rect a rectangle that's twice the size. So if we cut that in half, it's gonna be matching in resolution, which is very nice. Of course there's exceptions. If you have a very big flat area, you don't need to. But since we have curvature on the area, I want that curvature to be even. So imagine we have a circle. This will be our polygons. But now we have one face, then we have two faces, and then finally we have three faces. So if we keep it low poly like this, with just birds over here, when you take a look at this final model, you're gonna see each individual face. So now let's say we go a little bit more high res. Now you see I dragged out six lines. Now you can see it's starting to look more rounded because we added more points. One important part of this is that you add the points evenly. So let's say we have one line, two line, and three line. And here we have a very small line, and then here we have a very big line. Because the points are not distributed evenly, the roundness is not going to look as nice. So we could get a much smoother silhouette if those points were distributed evenly so that's something very important to keep in mind and it might sound a bit self-explanatory but this is a problem that you see in quite a lot of lows when people are starting out if we uh, take a look at this and go to mesh display soft and edge and click that to make it nice and soft here we can see that happening. So we have one point, two point, three point, and then our other point is right there. So right here, we don't have any curvature. So if we add an extra point to smooth that out, we're gonna be having that point there, and then we start to get some curvature again. So the more points, the smoother your curvature as well. But do be sure that you distribute them evenly. So we can just go multi cut and insert a new loop like that. So to distribute points evenly, we can turn, press B. This will turn on the soft select. Then with holding down B as in brush and right left mouse dragging, we can increase the size. You can see the yellow point is what we affect. And then the points around it will be affected, but less strong. This is the soft select tool and works with the retopology tools. So now I can hold down shift to relax everything out. So it's going to distribute those points more evenly. I do want to be careful that I don't mess up the points that are on that sharp edge, because we do need to capture the features. And then we can also do it on the edge to distribute the edge better. Then we can just kind of drag, and you can also do this without the soft select, if you want to be a little bit more precise. Also, since this mesh doesn't have any deformation, since it's armor, I'm not too worried about adding some triangles. But if you can move a point, you might have preserve UVs on, so make sure that's off if that happens. So now I'm just kind of pushing up points again up to the surface. Now this is looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go with shift of this, smooth that all out nicely. I'm gonna be matching some points up. If we go in solo mode and take a look at this topology, we can click over here to get the wireframe. Also I'm noticing a blue wireframe while we set a black wireframe and that's because we need to take this object, let's call it chess, and put it in a low group. So now we have a black wireframe. So even though we went out to smooth it, you can see 
this edge is still about 30% smaller than this edge, which is bad. So we have another tool to clean this up, which works really well. We can double click an edge to select the whole edge loop, then shift right click mouse. Then we can do edit edge flow. Then we're going to be selecting multiple edges, then hit the G key as in group to repeat the last action. So that's going to be smoothing out the edge flow. We pretty much just want to go over the majority of the edges to go ahead and distribute them all evenly. The only disadvantage of this tool is that it doesn't respect the high poly that we had. So we do need to go ahead and push those points up again. So you'll see they're not matching anymore. First up, we can try one thing to optimize this. We go to mesh. Let's control shift to edit to our shelf and we conform. Just like projection and ZBrush, we will try to project the points to our mesh. It's not going to be perfect, so we're going to fix some by hand. So doing this point by point will be a very inefficient method. So we can select one point, press B to get a soft select, increase the skill, and then push it up. And this will try to push multiple points up to the surface at once. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to get a lot of points working well so then we go back to the quattro then we do some final smoothing and some final matching of the features and take one individual point at a time fix them if we have a stubborn point also for now don't worry about the thickness yet just like when we were doing the high poly as long as you don't have thickness Everything is very easy to adjust. It's starting to look pretty nice and clean. So let's go ahead and add some more detail to our low poly. Also, just in case you're watching this and following along, but you don't know what a low poly is. A low poly is a low version of your high poly mesh that you did in ZBrush to get it working into a game. So we cannot have millions and millions of polygons running in a game. And then later we get the detail from a high poly back by doing a bake. It's gonna be very easy. So now you can see that it doesn't match at all. So we're gonna add a new loop. Place it about there. Then we're going to add one more loop and we're going to go all the way up. Now you can start to see why we had to fill those gaps. To make sure that the whole edge loop is capturing that feature. Shift click a little bit on the edges to distribute them more evenly. Now if we take a look at our low poly. You can see that we have a very bad shape. There's no thickness on that as all, at all. So you always want to be careful that you're capturing thickness. We can add an extra loop. This one's going to be a little bit more tricky. But to fix this, we can go vertex. Select the first vertex of the loop, then the second one. But I'm going to double click that one. It's going to select all the vertices of that loop. Then we can try to push that in just like that. Now, manually, we need to start matching them up to that line. Let's go ahead and take a look. And this is looking way better. Now we have some thickness there. We're pretty much going to be repeating this for the other parts as well. So I'm going to speed the video up. The quick tip is if you have a lot of edges, we can just select all the edges. 
then control right mouse to vertices then hold down w left mouse and go to axis normal then we can push them all out on the normal kind of give that thickness and to fix that issue that we had then we go ahead and we can move the points since they're not inside the surface anymore. We can fix them up by hand. Now if we take a look at this, this is starting to look pretty nice. One issue that we have is that you can still see each and every individual polygon. And Depending on your budget, if you're working on a game that needs to be quite low poly, you cannot really avoid this. But if you can avoid it, if you have the budget for it, I would try to avoid this. So what we can do is we can select the multi-cut. I'm going to be doubling that resolution to get rid of the faceting. The faceting it's the term when you can see each and every individual polygon. I'm gonna add a few here to try to even out that resolution. Let's go ahead and see what this does. So now I'm just gonna be selecting edges. I'm gonna be editing that edge flow to distribute them more evenly. add an extra one here to get a more even flow then these are too big so i'm going to be adding an extra loop try to make it more even now you can see that we're working with quite a dense mesh and lots of polygons but because we build it up so slowly it's very easy to work with because now the shape is already going to be matching more or less. Let's add one more loop here. I'm going to shift click so we can put it in the middle of them. I'm going to be adding some extra polys there. Just going in with the added edge flow, making sure it's all very nice and evenly distributed. I'm going to be doing the same to this one. Although notice that I won't be doing it to this one because I don't want to mess up that feature that we matched together with that one as well. Actually, I think okay, it's probably better if we don't touch that one. Now let's go ahead and start matching this up again a little bit. So I'm going to go in with shift, start smoothing this out. Let's try to snap them to the surface with a conform. Then we'll have to do some hand fixing. And don't worry if this takes uh, you more time than what I'm doing. I've been doing this for quite some time, so I've gotten quite fast at it. But back when I was starting, it would take me a lot of time to kind of figure out how to flow the, the edges. But with enough practice, you get very used to it you just kind of know how you want them to flow and also there's not only one right way of edge flow there's a lot of ways you could flow them since it's kind of up to what you like personally but for me the most important part is getting a very nice even topology if it makes sense, since this is a big curved object, everything is curvature, it makes sense to add even distribution of points everywhere. And little areas like these are always like little annoying areas that will mess up after you edit that edge flow and conform. So you gotta be very carefully to match those features up again. For a more precise task like this, I do switch back to mouse. I just hold my pen in my hand 
and I switch again to pen and tablet when I start to put points with the Quattro tool. And this is the Quattro tool, the one that we've been using so far. Also, let's make it safe, just in case Maya crashes. You should also be working with auto saves. So we go to Edit, Windows, Settings Preference. We go to Files. You'll have auto save. Make sure you enable that. Put it to a named folder. I recommend creating an auto folder in D, Maya, and select that one. Then just save, file, save, preferences. Just so in case if Maya crashes and you didn't save in like, let's say an hour, you don't lose all that work since we're having auto saves every 10 minutes. You can change the time of your auto saves as well. Also, another thing, if you go file save scene as, you can save as Maya binary or SC. Binary is um, it's like a binary code of the scene. It sounds complicated, but all that means is that it's more optimized because it's compressing the scene, which means that every time you save, it will be faster than using that one. Generally speaking, it's a bit safer to use this one if you're working on complex projects or projects that require a lot of technical tools. But generally speaking for personal work, I like to stick to Maya binary as it's much, much, much faster to save. Especially if you put a lot of high polys in your scene, it's going to be a drastic difference in saving time. One thing that we can also do is we can kind of work with the back view. You can see how that's aligning. Actually, that's not too useful in this case, so never mind. Actually, it can still be kind of useful. We can go like this. We can make sure that those points look a little bit more nice. So if you have a point like that that's sticking out a lot, probably want to adjust it a bit. For example, this one's quite suspicious. The angle break is very different. Let's take a look. We can also turn off life and we can move that a little bit to make it nice and smooth. Now that we're pretty far on our grid topology, we need to fix up center line so we can space bar right click mouse and then go front view by the way i'm hitting four to go into this wireframe thing and then five to go out of it again or you can use the buttons up here i'm going to select all the vertexes of the middle hit r to go to scaling then holding down r and left mouse click we can go to world then just scale it on the X to be all straight. So I'm going to go to world again. We hold our spacebar, display grid. We can turn that off and on. And then holding down X, we can snap to the grid. So I'm going to be making sure that those are exactly on the zero. Then we can mirror them later on. So to quickly show you how to mirror, we can hold down D and then V to snap to a vertex and snap the pivot to the zero line over there. Then we go mesh and mirror. Let's put this on here. As you can see that will be kind of messed up because it has some settings. So we can undo that, turn on the history, mirror, and we get a pop-up and let's just put it to plus and do not merge with border. Then we can select those vertices and merge the vertices. I'm doing shift, right click mouse, merge the vertices and merge the vertices. I'm going to be putting this at the smallest amount possible. Now we'll have a nice merged mesh. Now I'm going to hold down W, left mouse, symmetry, symmetry. 
I'm going to be editing the edge flow out a little bit more again. That's kind of a progress of editing edge flow and then fixing it up to snap to the high poly and then editing the edge flow again. You can keep going back and forward, which does take some time because you keep messing up the placement. So it won't snap to the high poly anymore. But this will ensure that your mesh will be very, very nice and clean and evenly spaced. It's going to look very professional. Then we go back. Our mesh life again. It's going to be disabling the history again. Let's go ahead and match that up a little bit. You want to be very, very precise with matching your high poly to get a nice clean bake going on. Make sure nothing is snapping underneath. Let's go ahead and delete the symmetry for now. I wanted to show you what we will do, since we do still need to work on this mesh quite a lot. Thing. If we try to snap this, it can be a little bit messy. What we can also do is just disable that. Then the component, we can start to move these edges. So they kind of align already. Then when we go back to our snapping, it will snap to the surface much easier. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of go about retopology. Lots of different techniques. I'm trying to show you all the techniques that I commonly use. Then we can also edit edge flow and that will try to even it out. That works because this edge is on the right place. So then when we edit the edge flow of this one, it's going to snap more or less to follow the curvature in between this one and this one. You can also try selecting multiple edges and editing the edge flow. That tends to give a little bit of a weird effect, so you got to be careful with doing it with multiple edges at once. It's very important that we match the feature. If we do like this, we're going to get a very weird looking bake. We've got to be very precise with the matching. You can also just go to, um, I guess we don't have thickness on that one yet. So that's okay, actually. So, light. Starting to crack the edges to line the up. Now that those are all more or less in place, can go in with the quattro and start to really precisely match them up. You can see this is intersecting pretty badly, so we need to grab this one. And let's take a look. You can shift, right click, and average vertex. Be careful to avoid any intersections. So I'm going to do it a little bit below that feature because I don't want to add a loop here since it's a waste of polygons. You'll never see it. You can see, if I try to move them, it can be a little bit difficult. So if I just take them and average them out, it'll make it a lot easier for me to actually go ahead and snap them. Even though we went over these polygons a lot of times already, you can see every time that we smooth the distribution out, we need to kind of adjust them. This is the way we can get very nice clean low polys by going over them multiple times. Example here would be now that we're going over them again. Look how this one is not flowing nicely. We kind of get this ugly shape. It's making this polygon bigger, this one smaller, which looks very bad. So I'm going to go ahead and edit edge flow. Now it's looking very nice and clean again. I'm going to be editing the edge flow out again. You 
If you hide it, it's because you accidentally hit the H key to hide. Just undo that and they will pop up again. And the more resolution you have, and the closer you match, you will see that you need to do less matching of the features because eventually the features will all just kind of fall into place. I think right now we're at a pretty good point. So what we can do now is we're going to be working on our first test to bake. And to me, it's very important that you never just read apologize and then call it done when you think it's done. We need to be kind of testing our topology to see how it's going to bake down. This is also nice so we can already have our test, our bake scene set up. So we kind of work at everything at the same time. So the first thing we need to do to bake this down is get some UVs. So let me quickly fix that up. So to get UVs, we can go to UV editor. You'll see the UVs are a mess. If you don't know what UVs are, don't worry. Just follow along and you'll get it eventually. I'm gonna right click, face, select all. Now we're gonna do mapping, normal map, based mapping. Now, if we go to view, we can go to custom shelf. It's gonna add a shelf to our UV editor like here, where we can add UV tools. I'm gonna go into UV and we need to smooth this out. So we're gonna go to tools, control shift click the unfold one. Now I'm gonna be selecting all our UVs. So I want to affect everything. So I double click one UV and that will select everything and click this tool. Now we can start to smooth this out. So this is very inefficient because the brush is too small. So if we hold down B, left mouse drag, we can make this bigger and we can smooth this all out at once. And if we hold down control, it will smooth it out a bit differently. For now, it doesn't really matter how we smooth it out. We just need something quick to bake on. One important part about UVs why we need to smooth it out is because we cannot have overlapping UVs like that. UV cannot overlap another point of another UV. You can also select everything, shift right click, optimize, and then just hit G a few times to repeat that. Now if we select everything, shift right mouse click, we can go layout and layout UV. I'm going to be scaling it down a little bit. Because the important thing is that we keep all our UVs in this little box. And then you also want to leave a little bit distance from that box to your UV. You cannot put it really close. Just keep a little bit of distance like this is fine. So now we have our low poly with some quick UV setup so we can do a test bake. So the way this works is now we're going to go to Marmoset. You can use any bake software that you want. Although Marmoset is by far the best baker in my opinion. Now we go file and we create a new scene of our new scene. I'm not sure why I did that, it, but it's okay. So we go new bake project, click the little bread icon. Now we get a bake project and a bake group with our high and our low. Since we're going to be needing our high poly at this point, we need to go back into ZBrush. Gonna, so I'm going to open up our folder. We need to select which one we use for the baking. So if you remember, the ID is where we set up the ID colors and then the decimated. So where we have the ID colors for the substance painter selections and the mesh is a little bit less high so they work nicely the mama set to bake i'm just going to be opening that one now let's drag our model out hit t first off let's go ahead and take our bolts we already deleted the load on this one so let's load the tool Let's go to our latest one. 
In this one, let's take our bolt. We're just going to be taking our low polys. We're going to export this. I'm going to put this in decimated meshes as bolts low. Now I can delete all on this one. Now this one, make sure the polypaint is visible, otherwise it won't export it. I'm going to go to the plugin, Subtool master. I'm going to go ahead and export. Now let's create a new folder in our project folder. Let's call this Marmor set. New folder called Bake. And we're also going to create a new folder already for the renders called Render. Now in Bake, let's go ahead and make a Meshes folder. Now finally, we create two folders one called Low, that's the meshes from Maya, and then another one called High for these meshes. I'm going to add an underscore and click save. Now let it just export everything out. It can take a little bit. So now that that's done exporting. Mom set, bake, meshes and high. I'm going to take everything except for the name mesh. You can just go ahead and delete that one. I'm going to drag and drop them into mom set. This will take a little bit of time, depending on how high poly your meshes are. Now that's done, we're going to need to group the meshes together. I should have named them before doing this. It will be a little bit more annoying, but since we don't have a lot, it's okay. Just going to hide everything, except for one. It's going to be extract one, so this is going to be our close. I'm going to hit Ctrl G, create a group, and call this close. So I'm going to try to make my set as fast as possible. Put this to draft, and let's look for our other clot. This is going to be belt. The naming doesn't matter; just something that's understandable to you. This is going to be our bolts. This is going to be our armor plates. And then lastly, we need to put our cap fixes on here. Let's take a look. This one, this one, and this one. These are the ones to fill up the gaps. Those are capped meshes. So let's move them in the clots one. Now since we have this all set up, let's make a save. The first save is always going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to save scene. Let's go to bake and let's call this armor bake. We can save. So now we need to take our groups. Let's unhide them all. I'm going to be putting them in the high group. You'll see this will hide them because the high group is hidden and should remain hidden most of the time. So now we have the high poly part set up in Mama set. So now we go to Maya. I'm going to go File, Export Selection. Set this to OBJ. If you don't have OBJ in the list, you need to go to Windows. Settings Preference Plugin Manager, just type OBJ, make sure it's loaded and auto loaded. Now in low, let's do armor plates low. Then we go back to Mama Set, we hit Ctrl E to import or I, however you call that letter. Meshes low. So accidentally hit O as an open, or they change the import hotkey. Nope. So I guess I exported to the wrong 
hold it. So let me try that again. I forgot to put it to OBJ. The OBJ and let's export. I like to turn off materials. We don't get a bunch of materials in the armor set. Now we can import the armor plates. There we have our low poly. Now all that we need to do is put this in the low. And then we can bake. But what this will do, it will bake everything from the high. So now we're going to be baking the clots, the belts and the bolts onto this, which is not what we want. So we need to separate this out a little bit. So in the bake project, you can create a bake group. Now let's call this armor. Then we take our high poly armor plates. We put this in the high. And then we take our armor plates low and put it in here. Let's also set this up for the other ones. Call this one bolts. We need two more. This one's going to be for the cloth. Then let's use this one for the belts. Now that we have our mama set set up, let's do another save. Now let's set up our settings. We're going to be putting samples up to 16. Now let's choose our name for the bake. So we can go to bake. Let's create a new folder called it bakes, as you might guess. Then let's just call this armor and save. And the only map I care for about for now is the normal map. So we can test bake. I'm gonna put this to 4K. And then we hit bake. Then when that's finished, we can go to our bake project and hit B for preview. We can check out our bake. But what we really want to do is go back to Maya and see how the bake looks there. So I'm going to be light and shading, existing favorite material and apply a blend material. Also go ahead and delete the history on this. Now what we do, we go to bump mapping, let's click file. Let's put this that messed up. Just click away. Just undo that a little bit. Go to bump mapping. File. Make sure to put this as tangent space normals instead of bump. And click over here. And then lastly, we need to go ahead and select our bake. Now that we have it. We press seven, no, six on the keyboard to preview our bake in Maya. And you might see that this looks very bad. So we need to adjust the color space, the utility and raw. I'm actually not sure what exactly I did. So it looks very white. The way it's only happening in this scene. So we can just go ahead and adjust the color a little bit. Now we can have a look at our bake. That looks a little bit weird over here. I'm not sure if there was a little mistake in the high poly, so let's have a look. And that's actually not a mistake in the high poly. It's the shading that we have. We're gonna ignore that for now. For the rest, everything looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and work a little bit more on this piece. I'm pretty happy with how everything's looking. Let's go ahead and do the final touch-ups. I just want to be a little bit more carefully that we're matching all the features. Let's all snap to the surface. I'm going to speed up the video since this will be very boring and very repetitive.
Now that we're pretty far ahead, let's go ahead and start taking this model to the next stage, which is going to be so my favorite way to add thickness is going to be to add our symmetry back. So first let's do that. Let's make sure again that all our vertices are on the zero axis to turn off light. Snap it and let's mirror. Again, let's turn on the history so we can adjust the settings. Alter the flow a little bit while working with symmetry. Like that, it's looking very nice and clean. So let's go ahead and add our symmetry. So I'm going to double click the edge to select everything. Do Ctrl E as an extrude. I'm going to be extruding this out. Just like that. Now we need to spend some time matching that up. Bird C, get F to focus. Turn on the light again. Now with the mesh quadrat tool, let's make sure it's nicely on the edge. I'm not too worried about the on side yet. But I'm just going to make sure this is all looking right. The other side is not going to be perfectly symmetrical because of the noise we added from Natural Breaker. It's mismatched again because we did added edge flow. Now our high poly is a bit straight here instead of rounded. Will also be the last time that we need to match it up as I think we're clean enough on the edge on the vertice distribution so that we don't need to edit the edge flow anymore. You can see here we have a little bit of a complicated area where we can start fix it. I actually it might be better just to ignore those areas just for a bit still. Let's turn off symmetry and work on the other side. Again, it's not perfectly symmetrical due to the noise that we added. So we need to make some small adjustments here and there. Now that we have our edge, we have the mesh display and soften it all out. It's looking nice and clean. We need to add the back side. This is going to be very easy. Just take our chest, we duplicate it. We're going to go mesh display. We're going to reverse. Let's also add that to the shelf and reverse it. Now it's pointing the other way. Now let's double click on the loop to get rid of that. And select all the vertices. And hold on W axis normal. We're going to be scaling it in the normal. Go ahead and hide our high poly. What we want to do is we want this to match as close as we can to this. So something like that looks fine. Now we go mesh combine. Delete the history. Let's also turn that off. And we need to do one more thing, we're going to bridge this, so we bridge one poly, then we double click that, then we get rid of those two edges, and hit G to repeat the bridge, now it's all bridged, so if we smooth this out, you see we have a closed mesh. Now we just select this one, the one that we bridged, shift right click, merge collapse and collapse edge. Now here we have our thickness. Now if we take a look at the poly count, it's at 3000. 
and it's quite high because we're adding a lot of unnecessarily polygons on the back. We don't need all the polygons on the back because if we take our cloth, you see that a lot of that will be hidden by the cloth anyways. You'll never see it from this angle. So we can delete a lot of the polygons on the inside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select our border. Also, let's go to UV. We're going to be using UVs to select. So let's do a normal based mapping from everything. Then double click that. Control right mouse click to edges to edge parameter and cut. So now we can cut the front from the back. So over here we just have the back. I'm going to be selecting that loop again. Then shift and right. I'm not quite sure what key, how to call it. But that's the, the key on the keyboard that looks like this. So shift and then that one and we'll grow the selection out. I'm gonna do that two times. I'm gonna invert that by shift, tracking over everything. I'm gonna control double click the front. So now we get all these polygons at the back and now I can just delete them. Now we have a little bit of a breathing area where we still have a nice poly count because we do see it on certain angles. Now lastly, we need to start filling up this space. Don't like having open meshes, so I'm going to bridge then connect. Let's baffle this. Only middle mouse to drag. Actually, let's undo that a bit. Let's just do the mesh tools. I'm going to be adding the multi cut. Make two cuts. Let's go out of life. Now we're going to be bridging these together. I'm getting cheap to repeat that bridge. I'm going to double click, Ctrl E to extrude, and just merge that all together. So the same here, merge that all together. And take this one and average that out. That's not merged together. Let's select that, make sure we don't select front first and merge the vertices. It's the same here. Let's average that out again. Then all these here we can collapse. Select these three and average them out. So this is going to be a very bad resolution, but it's going to be hidden by the cloth, so you never really see it. You can see it a little bit from this angle though. So I'm going to be taking this. And Pushing it in so it follows the shape better. This is a rough angle that you'll never really see, and you're gonna have shadows there filling it up. So I don't care too much about the look. So just like that. Now that we did all that, let's focus a little bit on the next parts. So we still need to fill up the other holes, but we can do that later. First, let's talk about UVs and shading. So what is shading? It's the way that the light is reacting to your mesh that will create shades. And the normal map can help the shading as the normal map will tell the mesh how to interact with the light as well. It's some things that we want to avoid in our initial shading. So we have two things, we have hardened edges and softened edges. I'm going to put these two to each other. I'm going to edit shelf called this soft. This one's going to be hard. Then we need one more. We go to display, mesh display, now polygons. Let's do hard edges color. 
and reset display and yeah. control shift clicking them to add them to the shelf I'm gonna be placing them together so if we click hard edges it's gonna show all our hard edges so if I hard edge everything everything will be purple then you can see every edge becomes very visible in the shading I'm not going to dive too deep into the technical aspects of this, I'm just going to tell you the, the stuff that you need to know to work with it. So whenever you finish a low poly, just soft shade everything, and you want to take a look at shading errors. So what a shading error is, for example, is that this thing is all the way black. So if we just go ahead and we do some very quick UVs, we can literally just do UV automatic just like that and we go file export selection now we look for our low and we export then in mom set we can go ahead and bake that preview now we have our bake so let's go back to maya I'm gonna hit the use default material so that's turned off, so we get our bake material again. It's interacting a little bit too strongly with the light. I'm gonna hit six to show the normal map. Let's adjust the material a little bit. And turn that down. So if we take a look, we have quite ugly looking big we get this weird thing in here and if we take a look at our zbrush actually it's a little bit in the high poly as well didn't clean that up nicely enough but for example over here we don't have it but we definitely still have a weird line in our normal map now if we turn off textures you can see that line is exactly where we have that black stuff happening in our shading so what that means is that we have a bake issue this is one of the most common bake issues that's caused by black gradients so one way to fix that is we can take this edge and then we can say shift right click soft and harden and harden that edge now we got rid of that line so if we export this again we bake again you will see it's gone but remember we have this line we now go to mama set and this will update automatically by the way the mesh we go ahead and bake again now we go to maya Remember the line to refresh the text, you just hit 5 and then 6. You will see that line is gone. Although what we now get is this sharp line over here, what we don't want. That is because when you have a hard edge, you always need to go ahead. You need to split the textures up. We can see some issues over here where we don't have a UV seam on the hard edge. But this is not the preferred way in my opinion because you're going to be adding a lot of UV seams everywhere. It's also going to affect some other areas. But this is very much up to personal opinion and project guidelines. But for me the preferred workflow is to try to avoid seams. I'm going to soft everything out again. Now, when we soft everything out again, you will see that we have that line again. But there's an other way that we can get rid of those lines that we have everywhere going on here. First, let's go ahead and set up some more proper UVs. I'm going to normal based project everything. Select this whole line and do two edges to edge parameter. Then I'm going to get rid of this line. And to fix this black line here, we can do a hard edge. 
And I know I just explained that I don't want to do that to add a seam for here. But since we need to have a hard edge anyway, to have the unfold to work, we can put that hard edge there together with a seam. Because we need that seam right there so it can unfold well. Now we can just go ahead and use our unfold brush and start unfolding this. For this one, let's do the same. Let's go ahead and unfold it. Go ahead and lay this out. Let me mess up our selection, so let's fix that really quick. And just like that. You can click this one to check UV stretching, and that all looks fine to me. Don't worry too much about it. Just know if you have stuff that's looking like this, where you have blue and reds, it's because the UVs are being stretched that you want to try to avoid. So let's go ahead and export this again so we can see how it bakes. Now doing the export every time is annoying, especially if you don't get on the right folder right away. So um, what I want to do is set up optimization for that. So we can click this button. This will open up the script editor. This will look very intimidating and complicated. All that we need to do is click this button, clear. Now everything you do in Maya will be repeated. If I move this object, you can see the command to move it. If I copy this, and I undo. Now we just paste that code and I hit enter. It's gonna move that object. Now if I undo this, let's say we alter the numbers. It's gonna move it further away. So everything you're doing in Maya is being driven by code. And a lot of that code is repeated in Mel, which is a Maya command language. So now if we just go ahead, clear this, we select what we want to export. One thing that we do, we need to make sure is that's in the right place. I'm going to be putting this in the low in the chest. Now if we select this, let's make sure it has the right name. You will see select our low chest. So it's gonna add the group where it's in. Before it was just selecting chest without anything in front because it didn't have a group. So now that's all set up properly. Let's clear the code. Now all that we do is select chest, file. Export selection, armor plates low, and export selection. Now it's gonna give you back the code that it used to do that. Now, lastly, I wanna clear our selection, so I'm clicking on the canvas that will give it back the code as well. So now we can go ahead and select this code, we can left mouse click and just drag it to our shelf. Now let's say Mel, because we're working with the Mel language, and click. Now if we right click this, edit, icon label, let's call this export, as an export and hit enter, and I'll save all shells. So what we've done now is we created a button to execute the code that we need to export this. So if I hit export, just like that, we have an export, we go to Marmoset, you can see our mesh updated. You visualize that a bit better. Let's make a drastic change. So just like that, now I hit export. Now you can see we have that in Mama set, which is gonna be very nice to work with, especially when we're working with a lot of different meshes and we don't wanna export each one, one by one. So let's export. Now let's do a test bake. Then we go back to, Ma to Maya. We get six. Now we can see our bake. You can see the bake is being pretty well, although we still get a little bit black. First thing that you want to check is is it matching the high poly, which it is. 
then we have two ways to fix this black so actually there's three ways we can deal with this black the first one is gonna be it looks good enough this probably if you're on a more tight budget for a game and the second one is to add a new hard edge let's say like this now if I export this we're gonna bake this out we'll see that it will look very very messed up the reason why is because how I told you earlier if we put a hard edge we always need to cut the seam cut these as well so we can separate it I take this thingy and I move it over here export we rebake you can see how fast this goes if you have everything set up properly now this will look a lot better still not the best in my opinion if you take a look you can still see some hardness that's just because the normal map is trying to compensate that's also another reason why i'm not too fan of using hard edges like this so let's soften that out let's move and seal that back together So my third way of doing things is add a UV scene plus a hard edge when you need a UV cutter anyway and that will always be on the back so it's kind of hidden we don't see that little arrow and then I'd like to go ahead and let's select all that to edge parameter then to deselect this we can use the UV as a selection tool and we deselect that one now that we have this one, we can go ahead and add a baffle. Turn on history, so we can adjust the baffle. Let's also baffle the corners. Then I'm also gonna baffle these. Now if we baffle, I'm not gonna give us the biggest baffle because we have some bad geometry here actually. Let's just get rid of them for now and worry about the baffle on those later. Give us a better baffle. Still not giving the biggest baffle, so we can force the size. We can put the fraction up to like something like a tree. Probably a little bit too big. So let's put that to two. What I want is I want to kind of match the bevel size of our edge wear. Just like that, let's soften everything. The UV editor. We'll be selecting our UV border over here and putting a hard edge in here. Now you can see we have a very nice shading. Let's go ahead and export that again. Let's take a look how that's baking down. Still giving a very weird result actually. So let's check out what's going on. I first guess that we need to go ahead and fix the UVs up a little bit. Let's unfold them well and lay out. Export. Let's rebake. That's starting to look a lot better. We do still have some black. That's probably the mismatch in high poly then. So I'm gonna make this one live. You can see that it's mismatching the feature. So over here it's mismatching, and that's why we're getting some black. Let's go ahead and line that all up better. Especially with the baffled front, we can really line that up very tightly. I'm not going to worry about the other side. I'm going to go ahead and mirror and weld that later again. And we fixed everything up. 
Then we'll do the final tweaks to match the other side's asymmetricalness at the end. So now that those polys are better aligned, let's go ahead and take a look at our bake. So first off, this is the bake that we're currently having. So we have a lot of black gradient. So if we export this, also I'm going to take a screenshot, just for comparison. I'm going to open up pure ref. Put this in here. Let's export. Now mom said we're going to rebake. Also notice how before before we couldn't really see the black in Marmoset because it's a bit more difficult to preview what you're actually doing. That looks quite messed up. Let's not worry about that for now. Let's go ahead and check that bake out again. Now you can see the black is becoming way more minimal because we're matching up to the high poly banner. Of course you can only match it up that tightly with a single edge that's why you will always have some of that black but since it's going to be on the back side i don't need it to be perfect on the other hand on the front side where we see it a lot I'm putting that baffle so we can have that look a lot better I think this also demonstrates the point really well, why we want to be working with test bakes and set everything up to work really fast, as we'll be doing a lot of quick exports and checking out how stuff looks like. So now let's, on, let's move on to the more complicated part. It's gonna be fixing up this mess over here. First, I'm just gonna get rid of our symmetry. Let's work on this side, the mesh. Probably at that point right there. Over a little bit. Something like this. Instead of going right there, we're gonna go ahead and delete this. That one as well. Delete that final back face over there. Now this is starting to look a little bit more manageable. I let's extend our baffle like that. And the back face here. There's always a little bit of a puzzle to figure out how to get this to work the best. So I'm going to go to Mesh Tools and where is it? Target Weld. Now we can take one vertex and weld it to another one. Not be the best solution. Extrude, collapse and weld that one to there. And then let's bridge that together. And I think this can be a pretty decent looking fix. And I'm not too unhappy with how that looks. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Probably wanna match this a little bit tight. So in this corner, you can add some extra points, just like that. To hold that shape. Snap it to that, we'll a multi cut, and just cut a line in the middle. Now move the points a little bit. Also, we don't need the bevel on this part, so I'm gonna collapse that. And then this probably looks better if we control Alt, arrow key right, and we twist that to there. There, match this one up here. Sleep it. Nice solution. I think this is gonna be the nicest looking that we can get. And that's not looking too bad. Get that up into here. Triangle there. Now we start working again 
and getting the back view back. But like that. Now we've completely merged that up. And add one more point to hold on that it to the shape. Then we're going to rotate this edge to be like that. Let's triangulate that out. Don't like how we're killing that bevel, so I'm gonna move, not move that over. I'm gonna cut that bevel back in. That's gonna be messing up the shading. Now here, I don't really care how it looks like, because we're gonna have shadow and our plot hiding a lot of that. Let's down, save a little bit of the poly count. That's the nicest we can probably get it. I think that's looking very clean. That's not looking bad at all. Now it's just a matter of repeating those steps for the other parts. i speeding up the video and I'm gonna be finishing up the other three errors. And now since the old keys pretty similar because we basically have in the same topology and the same high poly there. I'm going to try to fasten this up a little bit and put the pivot point here. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to be moving this down. I'm going to be trying to match that the high poly like this. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's hide everything. Let's take those polys. Control Shift drag to add to the selection. We don't need those actually. Then let's invert it and delete it. So now we get our little fixed corner. And select our original topology. I'm going to be getting rid of this corner. Let's make a duplicate for the next one. I can go like this. Turn off light. I'm going to be placing it like this. Let's leave some breathing space. Place everything in the little square that we cut out. Just like that. What we can do now is mesh combine. Now we can target weld those points up to our open ends. What this is gonna do, it's gonna increase the repetitive it's going to decrease the repetitive work, which is going to fasten up your workflow. And maybe more important, it's going to make sure that the consistency of the topology is exactly the same. It's going to look more professional. And it's going to bring a more consistent shading to our mesh. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and repeat that same step. Let's take that little corner. Delete it. I'm going to be placing our new corner in here. Let's get as close as I can. Let's scale this down a little bit. Use soft select. Move this more in place. Like that. Now again, we're going to be placing everything inside the little corners. 
Also, if you don't feel like target welding everything, you can just bridge. Deselect those and try to bridge that. Which is not letting us. Mind. Probably be faster to bridge target weld this and to figure out what's happening with the bridge tool. Then select three to go into smooth mesh preview to can check if everything is welded correctly. We yeah, have got some points. Now you can see it's doing something weird because we welded wrongly. We welded all that together, so I'm going to be deleting that. Average out a little bit. Let's extrude this by hand to fix that. That's looking very nice. Just gonna soft select this all. Uh, soft to this, I mean all. The shading. Let's go ahead and fill this gap. Seems that we have a bad edge there, so let's check that out. By going into smooth mesh preview, uh, if you have bad edges, they usually pop up because it will look weird. So this kind of where it review if everything's looking okay. Again, because we don't see this, I'm trying to keep this as a low poly as possible or kind of keeping a normal shape. But I'm leaving a little bit of breathing space for the areas where you do see the backside of the armor. We need to add some extra edges to attach to. Bridge that up and fill the hole. Now we can start optimizing that again. Now let's average those words out a bit. Something like that is looking pretty nice. That one's too much because I want to have more control of the shape there. So that's an area that you see more through the cloth. Make sure it's not intersecting with anything there. Let's move it more or less like this. Let's pull this straight from the zero. The world. Lastly, let's soft shade everything. Let's go ahead and work a little bit on the UVs. So just like before, we're going to take everything, normal based mapping. Go ahead and take that edge again. This time it's going to take a little bit more work. Go ahead and make that a hard edge and then we cut it because we always cut hard edges. Now we still need to do one thing though, we need to start connecting the seems up here and I think this one's not too bad of an edge to do it on I'll probably prefer to do it over here just so we can go ahead and make this a hard edge as well that we cut now not every time when we create a, U, a hard edge we need to do a UV cut it's so only when you do a hard edge, you need to place a UV cut. It's not the opposite way. When we do a UV cut, it's optional to do a hard edge. Probably harden this edge out as well. As you can see for the shading. With a hard edge, it looks very nice and clean. Without a hard edge, we have a little bit of a soft gradient. This one I'm gonna hard edge. This is a very rare exception where we don't necessarily need to cut the UVs. This is because this is gonna be an edge that you will never see. 
So we can just leave it as an hard edge. And that's it. That way we don't have to cut the UVs there. Quickly try to unfold this, see what edges we're missing. Cutting these edges up. And these are the only two that I want to make hard. Two in that one. Cut that one and make those two into a hard edge. Probably cut that right there. It should be separated now, which it is. Now let's just ignore that. Let's work on the next cut. So over here, I'm gonna cut this up as well. That's just because this text resolution can be a lot smaller because we won't ever see it. Smaller the UVs, the worse the quality and texture. So if we make this smaller, we can make the other pieces bigger because we'll have more space to fit them in the UV space. Now I think this is a pretty good starting point on the UVs. Work a little bit more on the shading. One thing that we still need to fix, the black edge over here. Just let's go ahead and do a test bake. So this says, no object matches name low chest. That's because we merged stuff and we broke our setup. So we can just put this in low and then call this chest. So it's like we had it before. And if we take a look at our script, you see it will select the chest that's part of the group low. So this is low, this is chest. So now it should work again. So export. We rebake. Let's take a look. Still not right. I guess I forgot to click it. And let's bake. So you can see we still get that very ugly black artifact. So again, we need to fix that shading to get rid of that hard, that black edge. So we can harden the edge to do it. Then we need to cut the UVs, because we'll definitely see this. So instead of cutting the UVs, we're going to add an extra edge, just like we did with the baffle. Probably go into here, so this we can connect. Then we can connect this. Let's go ahead and soften those edges up. And let's repeat this. Then we'll use a multi cut, hold on shift snap, so this way we get soft edges, because this one will make soft edges instead. This is another important part. We want to have that consistency in our model. So you can see we're putting the triangulation every time here. Now this little one we start our edge loop. And on the last one we don't need it. So we take a quick look at this, if I delete this and then undo, you can already see that black disappear a little bit. So now all that we're going to do Let's get our high poly back. I'm going to make this a live surface. Take our multi cut and then cut and let's connect it up to that edge. We we'll need to spend some time matching things up again. Some stuff got kind of broken, as you can see. Now with this extra edge, that you get rid of that black shading. You can see it's definitely a lot better. It's not perfect yet. If you'd want it to be perfect, you need to take the other one as well. 
bevel that out if and then soften that you can see that we don't have any black left but for now i'm just gonna try it with one edge kind of keep it low and see if that will do the trick let's go ahead and take a look definitely looking better at that point you want to make a decision what you think is more important to leave some of the black and lower the poly count or to get rid of all the black gradient but have a higher poly count me i'm gonna decide to do a double baffle just to get it to look the nicest possible it's going to be very dependent on project constraints. I'm going to go with something like that instead. Actually, we can just extend that baffle that we have. That will be a little bit cleaner. Let's take that baffle, add a little triangle there. And extend it from that point onward. Quite sure if that will work for that edge because we don't have a baffle there yet. But we'll take a look. Let's go ahead and match this up a little bit better. that we have this edge done we take a look this looks very nice and clean we don't have any black gradient left now if i go ahead and bake this you will see that we will get a very nice clean bake we don't have any of that black stuff left or the weird hard line if we do have any left it's because we're not matching the high poly close enough at this point go ahead and repeat that for all the thingies over here and I'll speed up the video. We're going to need to take a quick look at our UV cuts and we can go to UV editor. I'm going to reset display. I'm going to be taking a look at how our cuts are looking. This stuff we should all be moved and sewing. Can be moved and sealed. Thinking a little bit. 
And actually, I think it's going to be a little bit more clean and consistent if we just get rid of that double baffle. We make that into a hard edge and we cut it like this. I'm going to be doing that for all the pieces. As that edge is pretty hidden anyway. You'll only see it if we look at it from this angle, but all the renders are going to be like this. We seem to be having an issue with a hard edge there. At this point, let's try a layout, see how everything falls. Let's start unfolding this. This piece seems to be unfolding really nicely. Let's go to the next piece. We can go to UV shell. Move that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Not bad either. Well, and this one I'm not really convinced on. It's a very big piece. So let's go ahead and cut that up just so we can unfold it, uh, just so we can lay this out a little bit more optimized. Leave that we can probably keep together. We can look for uh, a Maya Mel script to select all the hard edges. So this one is great. This is the one that I've been using for Rafa now. So we can go back to Maya. Just select that all. The middle mouse drag this to the bar. I'm going to be doing that around here where we have our hard edge stuff. So let's call this select hard save. Now, when we click this, it's going to select every single hard edge. I'm just going to make sure that every hard edge has a UV cut. Except for those ones, because we're never going to see them. So I'm fine with those not being cut. Not cut. Unfold and see what happens. That still all looks Pretty nice. This one's having some trouble. Actually, they're all having some trouble in folding. Let's take a quick look what's happening. That unfolds a lot better when we move and sew it. And I'm fine with having that hard edge have some artifacts, I guess since we won't really be seeing it anyway. If you want to fix it a little bit more properly, you can also do it. Soft select this. Okay. Try to lay this out manually, so it doesn't oversect, intersect. Then we could lay it out like this, then select the surrounding ones. Try to optimize it slowly. Trying to avoid intersections. You can see we're not having too much stretching. Let's move the pieces out of the way that are unfolding fine. Let's also make sure this is a straight UV. So then this one like this. Like that. And then this one needs to be straight as well. This way we're gonna mirror it. Invert it. Shift right click. Unfold, unfold along you. Just repeat that a few times. This and unfold along V. I don't really care about the back one. Soft select, we can start to kind of play with the unwrap. Difficult. Let's keep this one for less. Maybe I'll actually go ahead and make it easy on myself to unwrap this. 
by putting the cuts here, it will be very easy. I'm just gonna select all the hard edges this time, I'm gonna cut them all. Lay that out. Now you can see that's pretty much unfolding right away. Little intersection happening right there. Let's go ahead and mirror this again. I'm gonna pull this edge straight on the world. And snap to the front view, the zero. And let's go ahead and mirror. Symmetry just cleans up a little bit. It flows a bit nicer. But here I don't want to do it. It'll be a pain to correct again. So when you do it and it like inflates itself weirdly, and I support edge, it doesn't want to inset, so never mind. But let's say I put one here, then it will be doing a better job, as you can see. And also take little ones like this, transform constraint edge slide, and slide it so it's very nice and clean. That will slide along the edge. You can do that for all the ones that are kind of bad. That's a very nice looking clean wireframe. Now, depending on the poly count that you can put into this, you can choose to optimize this a little bit. So let's say um, here, the silhouette is gonna be very important. That looks nice around it. But where it's flat, it's less important. So we could take, for example, some of these. And then we just collapse it like this and now keep the roundness. That's really important. But for this project, I don't really mind too much the poly counts. I'm gonna keep it nice and clean. Let's say the polygons are really important on your project. You can go quite crazy with this stuff. Like all this stuff, for example, could be collapsed down without really making it look so much more low res. Because so we're holding on to the curvature because we're not collapsing the important polys. Then lastly, let's go ahead and take the middle edge and convert this to a soften edge. Then we're gonna move and see. Actually, before we do that, let's go back. Take all the UV shells on this side. I'm gonna go to modify and flip. So they're not overlaying with each other. As you can see, if we push them like this, they can fit right onto the piece that we already cleaned up. So what that does, we can now go here, move and seal. Soft. You can see this piece stitches on nicely with all the other pieces as well, so we don't need to go ahead and unfold them again. Now for the one in the middle, I will be adding a baffle just to hold on to the shading a little bit better. That's very overkill like this will look fine but i'll do that a little bit later then at this point let's start finishing up the low poly the armor plates and what i mean by that is we need to go ahead and finish up the uvs which is not too much work but most of this is going to be is straightening out uv islands for example, this can be a very nice straight edge. We just put straight in the selection with shift and unfold. That's all. And for here, we can pull that straight and unfold. These can come straight. Now we can select everything. 
control and control double click on the next one shift and optimize everything in, the, in between let's go ahead and pull that straight up. that's looking very nice and clean See, we have a little bit of an issue right here and take those and move the seal when you do UVs, it's always a good point to kind of spot issues. If you have anything weird going on with your geometry, most of the times it will start showing itself very clearly when you do UVs. So one more, so one more piece to go. Just like that. Go ahead and make this one straight as well. Why not? This one we're gonna ignore for now. We'll get back to that piece later. But that one's gonna be a little bit more dependent on space to fill up. So if we need short things, we start cutting it up to fill up space here. So now let's just do something like this. We can export again, take a look at mom set, take this down, put like a metal on this, can just get a better preview. This is how our final result is more or less gonna look, which looks very nice and clean. Looking nice. So we got rid of most of the black. We have some projection errors, but we'll get to fixing that later. Although they're not very important because they're hidden. But I'll quickly show you how you can tackle those. Little black hairs because we're mismatching the high poly. So now I think we've taken this piece far enough. So I'm going to work a little bit on other pieces. So one thing I would normally do is when I'm not recording a video is do all the... Uh, similar piece at the same time so i would have done all these pieces since they're so similar exactly at the same time now i'm just going to do them one by one i'm going to speed up the recording to finish them off on my own It's always a good idea if you have already retopologized one site to just take a little screenshot and put it up in the corner just to make sure you're working consistently. Now we can kind of start to match the back side density to the front side to keep it nice and even.
So at this point I'm thinking that the topology is a little bit too uneven from the two. It's not a bad topology, but the front is a lot denser, which is something I want to avoid. Instead of trying to match it up, I'm just going to start off with this piece. Snap it to one of the verts. I'm just going to be placing this more or less where it should be going. Not going to be a perfect fit. I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. Probably something like this. Now I'm going to modify this a little bit. So all this we can move down. Pivot over here, holding down D to do the pivot movement. We can rotate this a little bit. Soft select. And try to match that up a little bit closer. Something like that looks like a pretty match. Move this all up a bit. Now let's take this one that loops around it. Be placing that on our feature over here. Very slowly matching up this geometry. Now we can make some bigger movements. Something like that. That looks pretty much like a good fit. This will probably all have to move down a little bit. Then to match this up to the length, we just want to go ahead and take that edge and extrude it outwards. So like that. Place some extra segments. This I'm just going to leave it like that. So let's make this one live. Also, if we do want to see the, the wireframe without this ever popping up, which is very annoying, we can go to settings and preference, color settings, go to inactive modeling, and go live. And we can change the color of this, or we can click on here, and we can drop down the alpha, which is perfect. So now we can always have our wireframe wire on without seeing the high poly wireframe. It's going to be nice. So let's say we have a low poly and we want to reference the topology. We can kind of look at it instead of having to constantly click that wireframe off and on. That's just a little tip. Now with smoothing, we can start to project that topology onto our mesh. And I do think that this is one of the easiest and fastest way to achieve consistency in multiple elements of your characters. It's just by reusing the topology whenever it can be reused. And also speed up the retouch process. Of course, since the back is bigger, we're going to get less resolution if we reuse the same topology exactly. So we need to add some extra loops. And I'm going to try to do this in a way that it's consistent. So I think at this triangle point, we can just do another triangle and add a loop. This can smooth out the topology, see how everything looks. It, but I don't like how these squats are like twice as big as here. The flow's going a little bad. I'm gonna try to fix that. I think that's flowing 
tab. So from this point on, we're going to speed up the video again, because I'm just going to be repeating the same stuff what I did at the front, smoothing stuff out with the Edit Edge Flow and the Quadra tool until we get something nice and clean that follows the height poly.
So it seems that we still lost the UVs in ZBrush. It's a little bit of a pain. But it's nothing too major. What we can do is we can do a soft. Then we need to make all the edges here hard. So what we do is mesh display and we do soft and harden edges. This will do it automatically based on the angle. So you can see it's messing up. So what we need to do is we need to go in our history. Let's adjust the angle like that. So now let's take all of these. Let's give them some quick UVs, normal base. And then lastly, we can use our script, select hard edges. And we're going to cut all the hard edges. Select all the UVs and lay out UV. Now finally, let's get rid of all that stretching by doing an unfold on all of these pieces. Use a super big brush. This out will be very nice. Hmm. Unwrapped. You can see we got rid of all the stretching. Now that we're a little bit further in the armor, pretty much got the two main pieces retopped. I'm gonna go ahead and do a test bake for them. And the way we do this is we're gonna go to our script editor. And we're gonna select this. Actually, we shouldn't select like that. Clear this, so we're gonna select this one. And then we're gonna shift select that one. So that's going to edit, then we can copy this part, then in our export, let's do edit. And then before the export, we add that select to the back. And then there's one thing left to do, let's lay out these UVs together. Save. Fix up those hard edges over there. Just like that. Now we 
can go ahead and export this. Now mama set. Give it a little bit of time for the back to show. And then we can do a bake. Let's go ahead and bake this out. Then back in Maya. Go ahead and review our bake. Looking pretty nice. So at this point, let's also just add the bolts to this. I'm gonna rename this to something. Bolts. Then again, let's shift select those bolts. Copy that line. I will edit and add this. And actually we shouldn't be doing it like this because we have a different bait group set up for that one. What we can do instead is to go to our export script. Go ahead and edit. I'm gonna get rid of this part. What we can do now is we just make some empty space. Also result, if it starts with a double slash, you can delete. It's just a note it doesn't mean anything, so we can take this stuff. Now let's Control C, Control V, and we paste it. So now we're gonna go ahead and replace chest by bolts. And let's delete the back. So what this does is first we'll do this stuff. But let me just make sure we clear the selection to be on the safe side. So then we'll export this stuff. Then it's going to select the bolts and export it and clear the selection. The only thing that we have left to do is to change this name to bolts. Hello. Let's give that another go. That exported fine without errors. Now if we go in here, we go to our low. Mom set. Bake. Meshes and low, you'll see that now we have a bolts low object. We drag this in, and you can see now we have our bolts here. So we can add them to our bolts baking group to the low. One thing I forgot to do was to lay out the UVs. Let's make sure this all laid out nicely. And lay out UV. Now we can go ahead and export. Now all that's left to do is to bake. This is looking quite strange. I guess just the normal map, so let's bake. Yes, yeah, just the normal map. You see the bolts are not coming out great, so let's take a closer look. Take a look at the high and the bolts. So we made a little error, we put it in the belts instead of the bolts. Let's go ahead and bake that again. Now you can see that's looking correct. Go ahead and apply our material, our blend. We're gonna rename this to bake and PL. That's starting to look the right way.
So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about some theory. So when we read Apologize Cloth, since it will have a lot of deformation, we need to be a little bit more careful. The most important areas are going to be the loops around the arms. Those need to be nice and clean. And then the loops around the neck area. And then in between, you can start putting some stars and whatever. And then another very important part. Also, a star is a, a point where five quads come together. That's called a star. And then also we want to try to follow a nice straight topology. So over here, the topology should be flown up or down, whatever way you want to call it. And here it should also just be flown nicely and up. That should all be nice and straight. Then over here, so it's kind of flown like that. So let's get started. And the first thing, if you remember, we made sure to have the sleeves separate objects in ZBrush. So we're going to have an easy time retopologizing this piece. So if I were to try to retopologize this now, you'd see that this would become an absolute living nightmare. It would probably pretty much be undoable. But since we thought about the setup, we're going to have an easy time. We're going to separate the mesh. And hide the sleeves for now. I'm going to go ahead and merge this one all together. We can call this torso. It's going to be very straightforward. I would even argue that this is going to be faster and easier than the metal part, even though it's, you have more deformation and everything, but it's going to be an easy shape. You don't have to match it so tightly. So the first thing I like to do when I read apologize stuff like this, I work on the important loops. That's going to be the loops around the arm. And again, just like metal, we're starting off with very big quads. So one thing I want to make sure of is that I keep working in an even amount of numbers. So what that means, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 or whatever. I don't want to go with odd numbers like this, like 13 or 15 edges. So when we get this leaf, I want to make it as nicely and rounded as possible. Let's say if you want to subdivide it or get rid of some polys, it's going to be easy when you can select every other edge. So over here I'm going to put four, since it's more small. And for the other one we can put six. That's going to give us a total of ten. Double check this, and now we have 10 edges. So I'm going to be working from here. So now we're going to kind of match our density on the other side. Now we can start connecting some of this up already. Again, working with very big polys. Now, over here we have a good opportunity to put in a star. That star is going to be away from the important deformation over here and over here. And for consistency sake, we're going to be putting the star pretty much at the exact same spot in the back. Something like that's not looking too bad. Uh, 
I'm just kind of distributing the polys out evenly again, like we did earlier with the metal. And again, we're going to be using stuff like the edit edge flow to make sure that we're working with a very nice clean topology. Now we can take everything, X is normal. Just going to push that out a bit so it's all over the surface, more or less. Now we pretty much have our main flow already defined. This can go quite fast. Go ahead and match this up a little bit better again. Now all that we have left to do is just take this edge. The right view. A left. Make sure that that's more or less straight. Now I'm just going to go Control T to extrude. I'm going to push that all the way down. Something like that. Let's pick up that little arrow. I'm going to be putting it on that sewing line. That's the middle. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and cut more polys in. I want to try to keep the polys as square as possible and as evenly possible as well in density. It's not too important that we have the exact same sizes because we are going to get the edge flow on this eventually. I just want to get it more or less. Something like that. And let's smooth that all out. These are quite rectangular, so I'm just going to grab two. I'm going to baffle them up. And again, I want to grab two because I want to keep that count even. So now we have 12. And we are going to subdivide this mesh, so then we end up with 24, which is a very nice even number to be working with. So that's looking nice and clean. Now let's go ahead and work a little bit on the sleeve. We have our base done. Actually, instead of making this one live, I like to work a little bit different on the sleeves. So what I usually do is I turn on wireframe, make this one live, so we also don't see the wireframe anymore. We create a cube. I'm going to delete both ends. If you remember, we have 24 edges, uh, 12, but 24 after we subdivide. So 12, we go ahead, smooth mesh this. We go modify, convert smooth mesh preview to polygons. Get 16. So we should be getting rid of one of these. Now that we have three, that should divide up to 12. Now you can see we get 12 edges. And 
Now with this, we're gonna go ahead and block out the arm. One subdivision. So we get six. So we can work with a little bit more of a hoop shape. I can edit that edge flow a little bit. bit nice and rounded. Like that. Let's go ahead and inflate this. Gonna hide this so we can see what we're doing. Make a nice straight. Something like that doesn't look bad. Inflate us a little bit. I'm gonna add one more subdivision. You can add more or less subdivisions by hitting page down and page up. Let's go ahead and conform this. Now we pretty much get the arm. Though actually looking at this, I do think that the pulch is quite uneven. We'll fix that with the connection. So right now, instead of re with the light, just gonna kind of model the arm as it's gonna be a bit easier. And what we're gonna be looking for is a nice flow like this. And it kind of starts going in like that. Now over here we can have like a star. There's always a little bit of searching to get it. Actually, let's get our high poly back. Leaving that one. I'm using what we have as a guide. That can connect up to there. Now over here we can add a loop. So I do want to be making sure that we at least have one loop going around all this. I 
this loop should be having 6, 12 matches, so we have 2 too many. That one can probably go. Gotta take one more away. Take that one away. Let's know. Get rid of those loops, because we're anything too little. Still need two more. This is the only uh, difficult part about doing sleeves and cloth is figuring out the shoulder area, it's always a little bit of a pain. Try to even that topology out. We can start to use this one as a guide. They also need to respect the topology on the other side. You can also hide the high and still use it as a light surface, which is nice. You can edit the edge flow without selecting that last edge. One problem we have right now is the flow of the topology is not very nice. Instead of flowing like this, it's flowing pretty much against it. We need to try to fix that. Putting this in to force that direction. Wanted to flow like this, left to right. But also, need to respect the loop. Then get the loop going again. You can see it's a little bit going back and forth, trying to find the right flow. This one should probably connect to that one. This one. Good, in again. So now we're destroying our quads and everything, but for now I'm just worried about finding that poly flow. Maybe we we'll need to add an extra loop over here, just in order to get that flow nicely. Now that we have that main flow, let's connect these up. What I mean by that is that we need this poly loop to flow like that. I 
open term of life just so we can kind of start modeling this out connecting all those points up and see what it's doing and a better feel of the flow this one should probably still flow like that but now the flow is a bit better but it's still not great it's flowing this way what we want is it to flow pretty much perfectly straight. In order to achieve that, I think we need to move this down a bit. And this one should be connected up to here, and then this one up to here. I'm going to check out how that high poly is looking, where this stewing line is. There. This one to move more towards the middle. Not connecting up nicely right now is because the back thingies don't flow evenly with the front. I think it's pretty much a resolution problem. Should be adding one more. That one up to here, this one up to here, like that. Though so because we added one, now we have an uneven number, which isn't really nice to work with. I'm gonna decide to put one more edge over here. Connect this up. So the resolution is getting quite low anyway over here. Now on here, let's go ahead and edit the edge flow out. Now these are getting very rectangular because we added an extra edge. We need to add some extra segments. Like that could work. Now we're going to be slowly editing that all out. And this is also going to stop matching the resolution that we have on the sleeve a bit better, which is great. Also, I want to get a little bit of a better idea of the final topology. So what we can do is a quick subdivision and see how that's looking. Oops. This flow here is not the cleanest. It's kind of pulling. It is not so bad that I cannot live with it. Try to make it a little bit nicer, I guess. And 
I'm going to check out the sleeve. The resolution is still quite uneven. I think we need to go ahead and bevel this one up. A bit more even. The sleeve should also be a little bit denser though, but right now the police like this one. Just for all this here. I do want it to be a little bit denser because we'll have more detail, but this is too much. Right now, the bad thing about this topology is that it still has a lot of cooling. Right here, you can see this pool. Well, and straight. That it's good enough. Also, you can be a little bit less worried about and straight flow. And parts where you'll never have clot simulation, like here. Over here, it's more important. Here, it's still nice just to enforce a nice looking topology. But I don't want to spend too much time on this. So let's call this. Pretty much done, but let's try to just fix it really quickly. We can delete that one. And then we can fix that pool like that. So now it's flow nice and straight but since we did that we're having an uneven topology again we then need to repeat the same on the other side but it's still not nice and straight the reason why is because that star now it's not aligned let me take a look like this star should be moving down a bit we can do that by deleting this stuff let's decide on the middle edge right here i guess put the edge slide and slide it like this This should be where our seam is in the eye poly. So let's double check if that's the case. Example, this one and this one should be more or less aligned. Make it nice and straight. I can grab them, turn everything off. Just align them like this. And here, a little bit of an un alignment. I'm liking the sleeve part now, this all looks very nice and straight, we have a good flow. Now we just need to work a little bit, finishing that part up. Let's do a quick count, we have 13. I think the most obvious one would be just over here. Eat that up out. more or less even. Try to kind of pull it straight like this. And we can slowly start pulling it straight all the way. Now in between these we can start adding the edge flow. 
the transition to nice straight edges. And the reason why we want to keep the sleeves with a little bit more density because that's going to have a lot of folds that we need to try to capture which can be pretty challenging we have very big pulleys That's starting to look good. A big fan of the flow here though. Let's fix this up. We can also start to separate this out so we can hide this. So we can see a little bit better what we're doing. So you can see even though we're retopologizing, we're using a lot of polybox modeling just to try to get a nice even flow. Now later we can worry about matching that flow up to our high poly. It seems like we're not coming out nicely. But that's actually a good thing. So I do think we lack a little bit of resolution over there. Starting to look a little bit more nice and even. We got 15 edges now, but probably I'd be adding one. It seems like we're mismatching over here. So that's where we can add one. I'm gonna delete this. Got a total of 16 edges, which is a very nice number to work with. Enough point to start connecting everything up together. Let's take a quick look at the sleeve. So I don't want to be touching this stuff anymore because that's matched to the other one. Take everything, just invert the selection here. Let's make sure that's snapping to the surface. Just like that, and let's hit that conform. And again, at this point, I'm still not worried about matching that topology up. Just worried about getting a nice clean flow. You can see we have 10 edges here, that's quite low. I'm going to be adding some extras. Like that. Yeah, don't want to be touching those final edges up there, because those are very nicely matched. Let's take a look at the total edges, 12 in this even number. So 
At this point, I think we're far enough that we can merge the sleeves together. This one, this one. Let's do a count. This is 12. This is 12, so that came out perfectly. So mesh and combine. Delete the history. Let me just bridge that together. Manual one. Like that. And select that and collapse. Now edit the edge flow on that. To get a nice in between. Again, I don't want to be touching that first. Third. Now that's starting to look nice and clean, and we have a very nice flow going on. Let's take a look at everything together. It's looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and merge this. One thing I'm gonna do is set up some quick UVs. We'll get a quick selection set. So now we can easily select the UVs to select the, um, the sleeve. Let's say for here. Combine. Now all that's left is to merge those points together. Take a look if that's all merged by going with the smooth mesh preview. See that wireframe all looks nice and smooth, no weird kinks, means that it merged correctly. Now finally we can work a little bit on the flow over here. It's not flowing so nice. So now that's all merged together. We take it all and add up the edge flow. And this not the cleanest topology. Like we probably should have continued this one more. But I think you get the ID by now for retopology for plot. So I'm not gonna bother to fix it. Like this is good enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at the preview of our topology and subdivision. See how that all comes together. I think that's come together quite nice and clean. Still have a little bit of a pull, but I'm not going to be too worried about that. That should have been. Down there. As the star is a little bit too high. We should have matched it with the other one over here. That should be right there. So this still flows nicely in loops that are straight. Spent a little bit of time, time of camera to fix that little issue up. Now the stars more aligned with the other one. Now if we smooth this out, we get a nicer topology. But it's all the same workflow, just 
putting stuff in and out, and that's it. With the multi cut. Now that we have all the flow blocked out, we need to go to the easiest part, which is matching it up to the high poly. The side on the seam over here. This one should be aligned with the seam that we have on the high poly. The one that's close. That one seems pretty close. Let's take a better look though. It's not close enough, so we'll cut it in later. Now let's do the same that we did with the armor. We're gonna take stuff, we're gonna pull it straight to the zero. So we can go ahead and mirror it to the other side. So let's go ahead and mirror this so we can work on matching it to the high poly. But first, I'm not going to be worried about the sleeves. Now that we have it mirrored over, first we're going to need to match some important features that are going to be the sleeves. I want to be very precise with these. It's important to work without symmetry at this point. Because we don't have a perfectly symmetrical mesh. That looks good. And we need to go ahead and match those up. Those are going to be a little bit more challenging. We'll go ahead and turn on X-ray thing. I'm going to go ahead and disable the life. That's going to make it a little bit easier. That's pretty nice as well. Bit on that flow. nice and clean. Now we need to go ahead and add the edge flow, but that's going to destroy our work. So I'm going to try something. Select those vertices. And go to the channel box, CVCs. These are all our selected vertices. Right click on the box and say lock selected. So now we won't be able to move them, the pins, but once around we can. Let's see if that respects the added edge flow. Which it doesn't, which is a shame. Let's see if it respects Quattro, which it also doesn't. Never mind, let's go ahead and unlock them. 
would be nice if that would be respected. So we're just gonna have to be a little bit careful to not break that up. I forgot some. Is something happened and it's mismatch? I'm gonna undo that. I think we matched it to the wrong one, this leaves. That's odd. just like the metal now we need to go ahead and match this all up with soft select and relax and all that stuff I'm just matching this up very, very rough and quickly because we are going to do the subdivision. Then we start to really try to match it up properly. If you have these bad topologies, you can just average the vertices, that will fix it out. I think that's good enough for the torso. Let's go ahead and match the sleeves up a little bit. What I also want to do is I want to take the UV shells, go ahead and sew these together by the way. We got the topology going, just delete that. That's soft everything. Select this UV shell, so we're using it as a selection tool. We go to mesh. Edit mesh, and then extract. That's going to separate this out. Now we have the sleeves. We're not going to be touching this one or this one. I'm going to be starting to match that up. Again, we're just gonna match this up very quickly because we are gonna have some subdivision.
Now that we have this, let's do a subdivision. And since we split the sleeves off, it's not going to ruin the position there too much. Otherwise it gets smooths out a little bit more. It's just like that. Take our other one. Subdividing that one as well. Only with one subdivision, of course. Otherwise it will get extremely high poly. Now I'm going to try to select the ones that we don't want to change. Invert the selection. I'm going to confirm that. Let's make sure that we have the right high poly. It should be torso. Now do a conform. Go ahead and select those. Get the whole edge. That the job. Please, let's go ahead and fix this up by hand. Trying to quickly push all the stuff up to the surface. That was soft select, and we get stuff like this. Go ahead and average that out. Now we can get a little bit more into detail. For example, we can start matching up that stitch line. Just taking the line that's the closest to it. This one. Stop moving that over with soft select. Let me just smooth that out to distribute the vertices evenly. Here it's getting super skewed. Well, we do something like this. Then we can just switch the line. Can just triangulate this to follow the line. We can triangulate that without problem because when you put it in a game engine, every quad is going to be triangulated anyway. Those triangles. Though of course it would be better if the whole edge was falling smoothly on it. I don't feel like adjusting that whole flow. Delete this one. I'm gonna add an extra loop. And from this point, it's pretty much all the same as what we've been doing. 
moving vertices, snapping them up to the surface and matching features of the height. I'm going to speed up the video. To isolation mode for the loops so we can start matching up those vertices again to the torso so we can prepare it to merge later on so these need to be snapped exactly onto these and I only want to be adjusting the verts from the sleeve as we match the, the verts of the torso So for now the only thing that I'm worried about is getting a nice even spaced 
topology and following our stitch line. And then to match the shape of the folds, we're going to worry about that a little bit later. As you can see, this is not the nicest looking shape. First, we just block out all our topology. Now that everything's looking pretty good, go ahead and double check that the words are still correct. to me sometimes you can mess it up with the soft select and the, the relax tool that all still looks to be correct i'm going to double check if we have our uvs the selection sets and we do so i'm going to start cutting up these uvs on the stitch line that we matched we take this one and then this one cut Quickly unfold this. So whenever you're doing clothing, you always want to put the seam, not necessarily where it's going to be least visible, but where the actual seam of the clothing is. Bind it. Like those parts, and merge vertices, external history. Let's put this at the least amount as possible. It's nice and merged. We can check that by checking our smooth mesh preview. You can see we have a few issues here. Go ahead and got UV shell and we're gonna throw that shift arrow key thingy and go solo be a little bit better. The only weird thingy is right here, so let's go ahead and fix that. Delete and delete. Let's bridge that up. Now you can see the policy doesn't look weird, which means that it's without issues now. Stopped everything out. That, that messed up our UVs bridge, so it did. Cut that up again. And fold. Now start adding our UV cut there. This stuff. Let's add our other UV cuts. Let's 
this edge to UV editor and just deselect everything from there and go. Now adding the UV cut for the other scene lines is optional because we already have a good unread. So this will depend on if you're going to use detail mats, it might be a good idea to make sure the fabric detail doesn't tell. Or if you want to have a little bit of better packing, if you cut it, maybe they pack better, maybe not. So you'll have to look at that later. Now we're going to start adding our thickness and our caps. This will be just like we were doing with metal. This can way you take your topology and you start finalizing it. When we're going to add the thickness, we need to pay some extra attention to the borders. But that's all nice. Like that is fine. Now you need to be pretty happy with the topology what you have at this point. Because we're going to go ahead and put it on the other side as well. Normally I would go ahead and match the folds a little bit better. But since we're not even going to see this in the render, I think like this is fine enough. What we're going to do. We make a duplicate, just like what we're doing with metal, invert the normals. This time we take a look at front view, hide our load poly. We want to take a look where that cap is that we added in ZBrush, that's about there. Then select that and delete it, and delete all the other stuff. Let's go ahead and take those words. Axis and normal. I just push them down until we match the thickness. Just like that. Go ahead and make this live. Now let's conform, just to match it a little bit tighter. Now we can take those meshes, we're going to do mesh, combine, delete the history, and just like that, we have our backside. And now cap, and add an extra loop, this is kind of like a safe thingy. Then just merge that to the center like that. Now over here, let's select it like that. And then just bridge. You can see that's doing a back job. We need to take one, bridge it manually, select all, deselect those, and then bridge. That will do a better job. Now we have our thickness added to the bottom. Let's soft select. 
Now you'll notice that the same issue that we had on the metal is present here. We get this very black line. So let's go ahead and fix that. Since this is clothed, I don't want to add a very tight bevel like that. So I want this to look nice and soft. So what we can do is we take the whole loop, we connect, control, right click the vertices and just move it in the normal. Now you'll see that it's a lot better than black. And let's also take these hard corners. Just baffle that out. Now that's looking very nice stuff. Of course we gotta make it quads, can't have angles. I'm going to do this a little bit different. First I'm going to do like this. I'm going to check how the shading on that is. I think we'll be quite bad. So the other one I'm going to do like this. Check how the shading is on that. Those are both quite rough. But this one though. Still not great. Let's try something else. And do something like this to smooth that shading out. That looks, that definitely looks a bit softer already. I'm just looking how the triangulation should fall to get the nicest shading. That's probably the nicest, as you can see. Now we don't get that big crease over there. Don't mess with it. I think this is the nicest way. So the better your shading looks on your mesh, the least compensating your normal has to do, which is a very good thing. So you always kind of want to look the best shading. Try multiple triangulations. And let's match the back. One thing is important, if you have these double-sided cloth things, that the front matches up with the back very tightly. Since we're just moving it on the normal direction, we get a perfect match. But let's say if I start moving some stuff here, the mismatches, you should be trying to move them together at that point. That's all looking fine. Go ahead and go to the next piece of thickness. This one's going to be a little bit of a different workflow because we are dealing with a cap. First off, I'm just going to make sure that matches exactly on the feature. And I don't want to have this one like on the beginning of that round baffle from the high and then this one in the middle or the end. I'm going to try to put them all at the beginning. Then when we have that, we can go ahead and screw this inwards. Like that. This one should be like on the end of the roundness. And 
And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and control click and add a loop. Also, these definitely need a little bit more resolution looking at it. Just put some extra stuff in. Now, I don't wanna be adding the triangles to our loops over here. I wanna have a little bit of space without triangles for the neck. Then just cut it in right here on that loop. And start cutting it in about here's a good place. Let's do three. On the other side, I'm gonna match that. That's three polys away from the neck. And then we add three. Um, shift to get the multi cut in the middle. Now we can just cut an extra topology. Just like that. Take this and add it to edge flow. Just like that. Over here we're also lacking a little bit in resolution. So on the same poly loop I'm gonna cut again. Again we wanna be cutting on the same poly loop to avoid being too close to the neck and to have consistency on the right as well. Bring that all the way down to there, add some resolution here as well. It's also an area that can be a little bit more dense than other areas because it's this, this is very close to the neck and the face and that's what you're looking at. We have an area that's more of a focal point. Be sure to add a little bit more resolution to avoid any segmentation. Again, uh, segmentation faceting, I mean. Best thing is when you see the individual polygons, which is something you want to try to avoid if you have the budget for it. And lastly, let's add some roundness to, to this, and this is also going to help with the shading. And very tight edge. Although I'm only worried about the top part, because the other part is going to be hidden by the armor anyway. Very quickly down here. Multi-cut and hold down control. Roundness is going to help out the shading. And let's try and relate that up. Again, triangulating four points, it will still be a quad, it will be a triangulated quad. And when you put it in engine, everything will be a triangle anyways. Now that we've got that matching nicely, 
Go ahead and just take this and extrude it down. Be a little bit messy. That right on the board of that cap, more or less. Perfect, but that's okay. Now what we need to do. First, let's add an extra division to this. Here we can just go ahead and extrude it and move and see with edges. I'm also going to add a little bit of a safe loop around it again we can hold our shift drag out the selection ctrl e to extrude and just give this a bit of an offset something like that now let's toughen that out now we have that filled up and we have some thickness where it matters And the only part that's left to fix up is the armholes, which is, which is going to be pretty much the same workflow. I'm not going to be talking about the process of this one, it's the same, so I'm going to speed up the video. I'm deleting the inside here because I forgot that we should be doing the triangulation first so that matches on the inside as well. blocked out. Let's go ahead and work on the triangulation. Like I said earlier, it's important to triangulate your quads so they follow the shape of the high poly. This is most commonly important when you have a quad that's like very different heights in the verts. So for example this vert, these are very high and these are very low. So if the engine would be triangulated like this, we'd get a totally different look than this. This is also going to be messing with the bake if it's such a different triangulation. But in other areas, like for example this one, the quad is fairly even. So no matter which way it will triangulate. It will look the same more or less and the shading won't be affected so drastically well but when the shape is going to be very important or a very big shading difference for example down here you want to make sure that you have the control of the triangulation. So 
the quad triangulates exactly how you would like it to. So when we have big folds, this usually happens, so we need to go ahead and triangulate it a bit by hand. First we can push the quads a little bit to follow the fold as good as possible. But at some point, we start getting to a point where we can't, for example over here. Then we can push it a bit like this. And then to do the final fix, we say this quad will triangulate this way. So now we we'll follow the shape of that big fold. Same here. We just start triangulating out our stuff to follow our folds. This is going to give a much, much better result than if you were to leave it very wonky as it's right now. And again, I'm only going to be doing this for the sleeves a bit because that's the only area that I care about in the renders. But you should be doing this for your entirety, your clothes. It's definitely a more boring process. It's definitely worth the effort. Remember, this might seem like bad topology. Someone might look at this and say you're using too many triangles in an area with high deformation. These are not actually triangles. Still a very nice quadded out topology, as you can see. And again, if you put this in a game engine, it will do the exact same thing. It will convert those quads to triangles anyway. It's better to just say how they should be triangulated. Another thing that you can do is also don't be afraid to add a few triangles like this. Now we are adding a little triangle there, but that's perfectly fine. You can see we're pretty much just following along with the flow of that fold. Now you can see how it's starting to nicely capture that shape. That's starting to look much better. From this point, I'm going to speed up the video, kind of go through the triangulation of the mesh. It's pretty much the same everywhere.
now I probably should have left. I probably should have added a little bit more loops for the elbows. So when they deform, they look a little bit less faceted. I don't feel like going to do that now, since I already put the triangulation in. I'm not planning on doing any deformation anyway on the character, so I'll use that as an excuse. Just a heads up if you're following this video, usually one has a little bit more loops around the, this area, so it can smooth out nicely the elbow. We can kind of cut them in like this to add a little bit more resolution over there with the bend. Go through the pain of actually adding some extra loops. Triangle there, the loop stops right there, the same here. You want we can also get rid of those triangles like that. It's in quite a deforming area, it might be better. Just to be on the safe side. But anyways, those triangles there should be fine either way. to have a triangle there and to have that all come together right there. Now let's say when the arm bends. Simulate it like this. By having those extra loops there, it's going to look less faceted. Since the arm will bend in like this, we don't need them over here. Of course, the arm can never bend like that, so that won't ever be more faceted than this now. We can call this arm done. Let's move on to the next one. This time I'm just going to start off by cutting some extra geo here. It will also allow it to be a little bit nicer and cleaner. More like that is how we'd want to do it. We can add one more to get a little bit more resolution.
Now that we've blocked out our triangulation and including our triangulation, we can go ahead and do the thickness again. So we duplicate, invert, get rid of this part. I'm going to go ahead and delete this last loop and be a bit easier. Then we just draw the quads out until we cap. Finally, let's add our safe edge. Then make sure collapse. Now baffle this to get a little bit more of that black away. We're saying here, bevel at the edge flow, conform. Take the last edge and delete it. Now that we got, so now that's all done, go ahead and delete some empty groups. Go ahead and merge this all back together. That loop, see if it's okay. That seems to be all merged together nicely. Now all that's left is to do the belts. Then we're going to do some final polishing touches on the topology. So we're getting here to the end. So for the belts, since they're all very similar, I'm going to be retopologizing them all in the same way, which can save some time if you retopologize all of them together. This is pretty much going to be the same workflow. We start with big shapes and we work our way down. And then at last we fix the shading with some UVs and all that stuff. The only difference right now is that I'm really going to be focusing on doing them all at the same time. But for the rest, everything's going to be exactly the same.
Now let's work a little bit on the UVs and the shading. And I was capturing that thickness of the, um, the ladder from rough to top, just because we need a bevel anyway for the shading. So I can just go in here, select all the back sides, and I'm gonna unwrap those. Actually, we should do an unwrap first. Now we can just map, normal map paste. Then we do the edges to edge parameter. That's going to select all the borders of those UVs and then harden the edges. Just like that, be pretty fastly retopologized and you beat all those straps. Lay them out. UVs. So for leather straps, it's very important that they're very straight, since they'll have a very repeating detail on them, which is the leather pattern. So first off, I'm just going to rotate them all to be the same rotation. The back side, I don't care about too much how they look, so I'll just try a very quick straighten on those. That's a pretty good result. Perfect to the back sides. Now this we're gonna have to do with a little bit more care. First off, I'm gonna be selecting the middle edges. Straighten, straighten UVs. Then invert that. Perfect. Unwrap like that. I'm going to select everything, deselect the borders. Add those to the selection again in the middle here. Now we go ahead and try to optimize that to get the most stretching out. Can also try folding those on you. Quickly check out how this these look. They have a little bit stretching on the corners, but nothing too big. I think that works great. Now the only thing that's left to do is take the bolts. Wherever we have bolts sticking to leather, I'm gonna just add a vertex under it. So that bolt can be scanned to the vertex underneath it. So just like that. Seems like I forgot to place some bolts over there. They're actually pushed in. Take that later. The reason why we're adding these verts to the leather and not the metal is because these leather straps might deform a little bit, so they need that vert underneath them to be skinned to. But on the metal, it's not going to deform because it's metal. So those bolts will just move along with the whole metal armor plate. Now 
now that we have all our load poly blocked out and pretty much finished actually I'm gonna go ahead and separate the UVs up in different material sets I'm gonna finalize the, the UVs by packing them nicely We'll probably split up the taxi sets into two different sets which is going to be the armor that's going to have the belts as well and then a separate one for the cloth Let's start off, let's do the UVs for the, the clothes as they will be very easy So it's giving us an error that we have some non-manifold edges. First thing I'm going to try is to normal map-based mapping again on those. See if that worked. Still have it. Second option is to do it for all the parts. That's going to get rid of the seams that we placed, but that's okay. Still have it. I'm going to go back a little bit so we can keep our seams. Second option is going to be a little bit more destructible. That's why I try to avoid it. Second option is going to be mesh cleanup and force it. But before we do that, let's make sure we got rid of all our angles. First, let's start off with angle and checking our mesh. So we want to select matching polygons instead of cleanup and face with more than four sides. That's going to be giving us back some faces that are with angles. So the first one's going to be that one. So if we select that. You can see that we did the multi-cut a little bit wrong. So let's stitch that up. Now if we do it again, that's all without the angles. Let's go ahead and test the other meshes. That one's fine. It's also something that you always want to do at the end. Just to make sure your meshes are perfectly clean. That all comes out good. Just add one. And the reason why I want to clean up matching polygons, because let's say if I force that angle back, we had something like this with that empty vert. So if we select, it's actually not doing anything because it's still a quad because we did on a triangle. Let's do it over here. Actually, I'm not sure how it was looking. I think it looked like this then. Now we have five thirds. So if we select, you'll see that we'll start selecting things up. But if we clean up, you will see that it will do a mess up. Because that's not how we want this to look. So it's better to do select, then you can see there's something wrong here, then you can just come in and fix it. That's the way it should be looking. That's the reason. So let's try another. So it still having those non-manifold errors. Then what we want to do, non-manifold geometry, and let's do this as well. This as well, and this, and apply. It's giving us a face back. Let's try deleting that. Apply, skip that one. Giving us this one. And try 
para que te lita. Now it's not giving anything. Now we can unfold this fine. So what we need to do now is fix our holes. We're gonna bridge this back up and fill. Let's fix that one up, just like that. Now let's try it again. Now you can see we can unfold our pieces fine. These are just little errors that sometimes happen. Just gotta get rid of them and that's, that's it. Now let's go ahead and unfold our pieces. So this one's definitely messed up. That's because we need to cut away that thickness. We're gonna merge it up like this, how we did it at the belt. Things a little bit more clean. Let's first off, let's force the triangulation. Definitely want to go to right here. Put that over. Then we can triangulate it like this. So we can take this edge, we can cut it. This one as well. So let's make this one hard. that those don't get too close to each other. So I'm fine with having a little bit of stretching and stuff. And let's relax everything in the screen. Although that looks like it's giving a worse result. As you can see it's getting rid of some stretching, so that's good. Then this piece is going to be a little bit of a special case. Because it's the inside. And it's going to be hidden by legs and shadows and whatever you want to really see it. Just gonna make this into a straight UV. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right on here. So it's gonna reuse the texture space over there. We'll get a little bit of a seam here, but you won't be able to see it without shadow and movement and whatever, so that's fine. But that's for later when we're gonna pack everything. So these are not very important. This one is not important. This one either. This one either. 
the one that I do care about is this one. Normally you won't be seeing this with uh, the face and the shadow since we're going to be doing a render without the face. It's going to be visible in our case. So I do want to be careful with that. Also I want this scene to be over here instead on the inside. Let's go ahead and adjust this a little bit. Let's put scene right here. Putting it over here and over here so we can cut. We can make that hard for the shading. Let's also harden out those edges. You want to be careful for intersecting pieces like this. You can fix that up by hand for a bit. I do feel like it looks better like this. Then I'm going to take that middle edge, let's pull that straight, and get the selection and hold on the Now we should have some very nice UVs. And check some of the more problematic areas out, like over here. Seems like we have a weird UV seen there. So finally, let's do our final cleanup. Just make sure this edge is super straight. Nice and straight like that. This one looks super straight already. Little bit of an intersection here. About these parts, and this is all looking good. So I'm going to lay this out. We're going to try to use the space as good as we can. Right now it's very unoptimized. So this is the only real parts that we care about. Let them all be the same size. Just to make sure they should be the same size already. We're going to grab the parts that I care about. I'm going to scale this up as big as I can so it fits in the UV space. You can still mess a little bit with that. And like this probably closest that we can fit it, more or less. 
Now we're gonna need to adjust these UVs so they fit in this tight packing so we can pull this straight. All down a bit like this. Pull this up a little bit like this. Make sure those all end with the same length. I'm gonna invert and volt along V. Just like this, we get a nice fit. We can get a set. Make it smaller, so never mind. Now this over here is going to be quite messy. We did pull that very, very straight. I'm going to try to relax that a bit. Maybe something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and check that area out. Also, a pretty important area, so we do want to be sure this is very nice. That looks fine. That looks enough. Then now we can actually this one this one's still quite important. So I'm gonna get that match the size. Okay here we can probably make it the biggest. We can go ahead and soft select it into this space. It was a very important piece, I wouldn't be deforming it like this, but it's not that important. This will look fine. And these ones I really don't care about, you don't have to see them. Just need to be there for a big block of color, so I don't care about the resolution on them. Although these are great, great little thingies to kind of fill up empty UV space, just to give the illusion that your UVs are more optimized. Something like that. And that looks very nice and optimized. Let's fill this up a little bit. And lastly, for this one, Top side, that's correct. I'm going to try to match them up quite closely. But like that, that should do. Those intersecting. Now we just move it over. Let's put this to one. Type. That makes sense that interacting, intersecting. All these. Not straighten, we just need to straighten the border. Actually, we don't, let's just pull straight. Like that. I'm gonna match it up over here. That's fine. Move it over to the side. Let's go ahead and we copy this value. 
over here. Go ahead and match our texel density. So we just set. We're gonna need to do that for all the pieces. So we set. And then we do a layout. Take a look how big that is. That's a bit bigger, which is fine. First off, again, let's take our unnecessary pieces away. That one. And this one. Out. The belt as well. So the first thing I'm thinking is not unwrapping great. Let's go ahead and think a little bit. The first thing I'm thinking, the belts, let's get rid of all the back sides as well. With the belts, we can probably double those in textile density. Just so the leather details will look very nice and sharp. Now let's move on to the side. These can probably be a little bit lower in textile density. I don't really care too much about them since the main focus of the renders will be about here and I guess down there those are still kind of important. And these have a lower importance but still might be visible and these I'm probably not going to see. I'm just ordering them from importance. This area is important, kind of important, not important at all. Back, everything's gonna be of importance except for that piece. Like, okay. Okay, that's all the same importance. I'm just kind of having a look at my UVs, trying to understand what I want to give resolution and what not. At that point, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the clunkier things like this, kind of move them away. Then we're going to start to unfold stuff. So these pieces are going to be the main pieces. So we'll decide how we all, um, lay everything out. As for the rest, it's pretty much going to be using the empty space that we have left. I'm starting with a layout, just to kind of get the resolution going. These little things are definitely not ideal for packing things tightly. I'm going to take a look where those are, if we can put a seam on them. So we can definitely seam that. Now this is going to be able to stick under here way closer. Repeat that for all of them. Pretty sure they're all kind of hidden. Yeah, pretty hidden. Again, giving us a better layout already. Take all these little 
pieces that we'll use to fill up the empty space. Move them to the side. This one's a filler, this one's a filler. This one could probably be cut a lot handier. The foot has some more seams, so we can pack things more tightly to get more resolution, as long as the seams will be pretty hidden. Those just look like a total thing. At this point, this is pretty much all filler UV. which can basically fit anywhere in between other UV pieces. The main thing that we gotta lay out, I guess, is this. Just gonna try to make this as square like as we can, packing them tightly together. For example, is this kind of curving in and this curving out? This would probably be a nice one to stack on top of here. Now we can take like our first filler piece, fill that empty space up. Otherwise we won't be able to fill that up anyway. Same here, like a little filler piece. Try to square this area out. I'm trying to create this shape. So you always want to start off with the big blocks and then fill the space up between big blocks with small filler pieces that can fit very loosely into different spots. But for example, this is more difficult to just place somewhere, and that's why we're kind of starting off with those big ones. They're pretty hidden anyway, so we just scale them down to make them fit. This one for the important piece. You just mess with the UV so it will fit better. Literally just take this and soft select it so it doesn't intersect. Edge padding distance just like that. And again, because this UV is pretty much hidden, I don't care too much about it. Although I would like to keep this edge straight instead of that one, because this one will be more visible. That's going to help the bake out. So this one's straight. 
Wow. Right. Let me double check this one. Let me demonstrate as well. Right. May demonstrate. I'm just going to move this off a little bit. Make it fit. Some edge padding. That's all straight on the right edge. Now all that's left to do is fill the UV space up with these thingies. We want to be very tight, so we do need to add the, the leather belts to this. Yeah, we want to require some resolution as well. And for these pieces, we just kind of look for areas to be filled out. Here we can still put the bolts in. We're just trying to find the most practical places for them. Best place. something like this. Now I'm going to cut this back side up into pieces so it fits. I don't care too much about the resolution on them, as they're on the back, but they still might pop up. So I don't want to absolutely destroy the resolution. You can go quite a bit lower with these. But now I'm going to save them. First let's go ahead and put the belts with this. Start up, they must have the same resolution or higher at the least. Let's add. See how tight we can get those. Because they will have the same material and the same color, you can go a little bit tighter on the edge padding. The reason why you cannot go too close normally is because with the mid mat, it's like a low version of the text here for distance, colors can bleed into each other. But if you have the same color, it starts to matter a little bit less. That and actually fit really nicely in there. Can scale them up a little bit. A bit more resolution out of them. So like that's not bad. These go at the place where I don't care about. Actually those are still important, not mind. Just forgotten, so let's get and set. That were the back pieces, but not. 
This can go down here. Like that. We're just kind of working our way through importance right now. Let's think. Those are really not important. The lights, I forgot about those. So those are the only really important pieces. Let's see. We're gonna adjust the unfold the layout a little bit. Should get rid of those so we can fill that up nicely here. So these definitely want to fit right into here, so we can play a little bit with the size of them like this. Make sure that fits. Straighten this edge out again. See, these were not that important, but still kind of important. So we can lower the size a little bit, maybe take two. See if we can make them fit nicely somewhere. Hmm. Let's see if we can lower these. We're kind of lacking on space now. And this edge padding can be closer than this one. Because here we have two different colors and this one are the same. Yeah, this one's a little bit less important, so I can scale it down so it fits. Same here, let's move it down a bit, make it fit. I'm just gonna rotate a bit like that. Now you can see all the places that are important have some space. Now it's just about filling space up. It's like quite often for in unimportant pieces. I kind of cheat my way through making them fit. Cut them up, make them fit in places. Again, a lot of this is just unimportant leather, uh, unimportant metal. So as long as we have a metal on it, I'm fine with it. It was still a little bit more important. Let's try to not destroy the resolution on it too much. Again.
So now with all the unimportant UVs left, you can just lay them over other UVs. Just so that they have some metal and whatever. So you'll never be able to see them, just to be sure. In case you do end up seeing them. Just like that. You can try to select overlapping. That all looks fine. So let's try that on the clothes. That all looks fine. Let's do a save. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our final baits. So to set up our final baits, I'm gonna adjust our bait scene a little bit. I'm gonna get the cloth out of this mama set scene like that. Let's go ahead and fix our export script. It can go. We lost some of the stuff that we did last time. That's our armor plates. Let's do the belts. Finally, the bolts. That's gonna be all for the first texture set. The back chest bolts, legs. Yeah, it's red. Make it a little bit more readable. And for the final text set. Let's export out our cloth. That, I'm gonna go ahead and save the shells. We can just click one, edit, you will save all shells, and save preferences. Now when we click this, it's gonna set everything up from Maya to Mamset. Now this is gonna have all our final UVs. We're missing the the belts though, because we didn't import that early yet. Get our belts in here. Then we can do a bake. So we're having some issues. That's because we didn't put the belts in the right group. That's looking a lot better. You can see the edge damage that we add in ZBrush makes quite a big difference. This looks a lot nicer than the other ones that we didn't do at all. Now after baking everything down, it's time to take a closer look at your mesh. And I can immediately tell there's something weird going on here. This must be a mismatch in the high poly. As you can see, it's a little bit mismatched. So I'm going to spend some time to Go ahead and clean that up a little bit, make sure everything matches. Now it's just a matter of going back and forward between Maya and Marmoset, matching up more closely and then trying to see when you get to the point where everything looks correctly. As you don't need to be perfect 100%, we need to be close enough to get all the weird stuff out. So there's another type of common error. That's if we go over here, you can see this little thingy which is caused by a projection error. These are usually on areas that are very tight to each other. 
I'm expecting to see them over here anyway. It doesn't seem that we have too many, so that's nice. That's just this area projecting onto here or vice versa. You can fix stuff like that by going into mom set, go to armor and low. You can either push the, the cage or paint it a little bit. For example, right there, I have something weird. The first thing I'm going to try is to push the cage in a little bit because it's quite far out. So you can unhide the high. I'm going to put the cage opacity to one. I'm going to try to push it as close as I can without getting into sections. Something like that doesn't look bad. Go ahead and hide the bolts and bell. Big arrow over here. So we can either adjust that or we can go to Maya. We can match those areas up a little bit close to the high. Because when they're so far off, it means that the low is misaligned. As you can see, this is not snapped to the surface. Especially over here, you can see it's very badly. This can also be used as kind of debugging to see if your low poly is correct. Now you can see that's starting to look a lot better. They just have a very big one still there, so there's probably an issue with the topology. Let's check that out. As you can see, the topology is all messed up there. There's a good little trick kind of spot that topology. On 
Also, let's go ahead and fix up the UVs a little bit since we did a lot of adjustments. Let me take a look now. Clearly, nothing seems too broken. Some pieces need to be optimized. For example, this one's really bad. So just select everything on the inside and optimize. Here we have a pretty bad one. That should be fine. Now if we have some stubborn intersections, we can just paint them out by hand. For example here, we do have a little bit going on. We can just paint the offset, take a big brush, and paint that issue away. For the inside, let's try to fix that up a little bit. Though I'm not too worried about this part. Okay, here we have a problematic area. Let's go ahead and check that out. You can see the port is quite messy over there. But pretty much all baking errors that you'll get stem from bad topology. So a lot of times when you get a baking error, you shouldn't be going in Photoshop or whatever and trying to bake, trying to fix that bake. They should be adjusting your topology. Because there's some exceptions, there's some very rough bake errors so that you just can't get out with adjusting topology. That seems to be fixed. So now let's do another bake. So let's hide the cage. Got a little arrow over there. So let's try to paint the offset. See if that will fix it. Getting a few of them here and there. I'm not quite sure what's happening with that. The first thing I want to check out is the high poly. As you can see, there's an error that's happening on the high poly as well. Go ahead and check the wireframe out. Some bad shading is my first guess. Yeah, that's triangle with zero length. Usually we don't get so many of them.
What I'm going to try to do is take the armor. I'm going to re-export it. So if we take a look at our decimate the mesh here with shiny. They are not popping up. That's because the ZBrush is making everything as a hard edge instead of a soft edge. The soft edges are breaking the shading. What you can do is you can go to preference. Export. I'm just going to make sure export smooth normals is turned off. And let's export this one out. And that also didn't fix our issue. I think the best way actually is still smoothing it out. I guess the best way to do it would be to harden everything up in Maya and to export, but that will take an insane amount of time to import. I think this piece, the easier fix would be just to go with the undecimated version. So for that we go back to ID. We export that one. So now by breaking down the non-decimated version, we got rid of those little shading errors in the high. That's all looking nice. So what we're gonna do now is set up the final bake. So we're gonna set up all the maps. Pretty much gonna be everything over here. Make sure to do the vertex color, this is gonna be the poly paint. And that should be all. Then on the ambient occlusion. Let's go ahead and put the ray count up to 12 and enable everything. And for our final bake, I'm going to put this to 16 bits and make sure to put this to 64. Then we can just go ahead and bake that down. And for this one, there's not going to be too much stuff that can go wrong with clipping for materials. But just to be sure, it's good practice to go into your albedo. Then you want to go to your base and put the vertex color in here. So you can kind of check out how that's all looking. And if you put it to material values and then albedo, kind of get a debug view of projection arrows and clipping stuff. This all looks nice and clean. Now let's go ahead and do the bake for the, the clot. Although we do still need to adjust the model a little bit on that one. We can call this all done. So we still need to go ahead and add a little bit of an extra edge over there for the shading and to capture the shape a bit better. We're still really mismatching that. This one light. Make sure it's just all selectable, so it is. 
Then all what we're gonna do is take our multi-cut, cut an extra edge. Let's repeat that on the other side. Now we have one more thing to do. If we go ahead to our UV editor. Right now our steam is over here, which it shouldn't be. That one's not cutting, because we have the triangulation there. Let's go ahead and cut these. I was going to make them into half edges. And then the next one, we want to move from two. Just cut that to not mess up the UVs. Now we can just move from two then. Okay, for there. So before we do that, let's take these, and shift, go pinning and pin selection, now move and zoom, and the work, let's try the UVs himself. Command, and let's just take this and unfold it out. And then before we call it done, I want to add one extra edge. Just to round this shape out a little bit. Be in the middle. Now we move it in the normal. Just like that, we have our cloth done. Now we can worry about baking it. But again, this is going to be very challenging to bake like this, because we have a lot of intersecting stuff. So what we can do is I'm going to make a duplicate. I'm going to call this one for bake. And do one more duplicate. On this one, I'm going to do UV shell, select all this stuff, invert it and delete. Now we're going to do the same here, but then with the sleeves and invert that. Now we get the same thing. Since we have a hard edge, we don't need to worry about that shading over here. But let's say if you had a soft edge, so if we give an example. Let's say you wanted to separate these two out for the same purpose, but we have a soft edge this time. If we go mesh, add a mesh extract. You will see a very big problem, and that is because we're splitting it into two different objects, it's giving it a hard edge. But what you can do then to fix that is you just select them, go into vertex mode for both of them, then you select the vertex, the vertices, like that. They go mesh display and do average. That will soft the vertex out again. Then you can bake it down normally. Now after baking, you can do a combine. Then you merge the vertices. And you'll see that you have some strange shading going on. And the last thing you need to smash display and unlock normals. Now of course you need to go ahead and make that soft again. Then you have the same shading as you baked it. 
let's actually call this leaves and dorsal. And again, we have a hard edge, so we don't need to worry about anything. I edit my script. I'm just going to hide those. Now when we export, we export those out nicely. And this one, let's apply a blim. History. Updating. I'm going to call this big plot. And let's go ahead to our ZBrush. We need to make sure that we export our cloth a bit different this time. We go here. You might be able to guess it. Auto groups. It seems that this one's not decimated, but okay. I'm gonna hide the torso part. Actually, first let's just get rid of the subdivisions. I'm gonna hide it. I'm getting rid of the subdivisions so it won't re construct them, which will take some time. I'm going to split this. Now we can merge those two together. That's everything of the sleeves. Now let's merge all our torso pieces together. So see that we have an insection which we should pick. It would have been easy if we didn't delete our subdivisions yet. We can try the move tool, option topological, and just move that in and check if we have any others. That seems to be the only one. You can either decimate it or just export it straight since we're splitting up the scene now. 45 million bodies won't be too bad to handle, actually 35. Let's set up the new bait group. Just like before, we need two groups. One's going to be for the torso, the other one for the sleeves. Like always, we're going to start off with a quick test bake. Now it's time to kind of check if our setup is working, because this will be the most problematic area, probably. Also, it seems that we forgot about the hard edges. Fix that up. Let's re export. And we should also be doing that on this one. But it seems that somehow this is moved a bit. That's not good. So we can snap this to a vertex. We can turn on wireframe. We just snap it to the same third. 
since the topology is all the same, it's going to be exactly the same. Let's go ahead and fix this thingy up as well. It seems that that's not right. These were actually in the correct place then. And the low somehow got messed up, I guess. We accidentally moved that. Let's check the others, and those are fine. I'm gonna re export that and bake that again. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our world bake. Again, bump map, foul, tangent. Take a look. That's looking about correct. Let's put it to raw. That fixes itself. We do have quite a lot of errors. They're looking very interesting. Map first. Try would be to mesh display and unlock the normals. If that changes something. It also in, in mouse that's not looking like that. It's also giving a little bit of issues. Let's go ahead on explorer mode. See what's causing the issues. The first thing, let's just do a re-export to be sure. Get the latest, and let's bake. That's definitely messing up. I will cut it. My first guess will be that we're just mismatching the high poly on those areas. Hide the torso, let's take a look at the sleeves. Those seem to be baking down fine. Yeah, if we take a look, definitely starts to make sense. Not matching exactly the stuff that we have over there. First off, let's get rid of the sleeves. That one's baking down fine. Then we can probably fix this by just altering the cage a bit. Though I'm not sure. The cage doesn't look too bad. Let's put a little bit close to the height. Now we can start to see where some of those errors are coming from because it's mismatching too much. Over here it should be a bit better. Also let's go ahead and paint the offset for the folds over here. And when you have like a stubborn one like that, you can see that we should be triangulating it the other way. And that's because we didn't triangulate it by hand. We can start some of the importance of that. But since it's pretty much hidden, I'm not gonna care about it too much. Now we sound to get a pretty nice bake, except for the mismatched topology. Now if we take a look at all together, you see how that's baking down pretty nicely. Of course this area is going to be very rough, it's a mismatch. We can try to fix that up very quickly. We 
I think you can really tell as well. Anytime you get a baking error, as you can see, we're getting an error. And the topology is all kinds of messed up. That's another good reason to not try it and fix simple bake errors with Photoshop. But pretty much just a hint that your topology is bad. <clears throat> That's starting to look a lot better. Go ahead and fix those little thingies up. Average them out. Now that's matching way closer, we should be able to get a bake that's much better. Now if we go ahead and export this We bake again. See that's looking much better. Let's fix up the other side as well. Now that's going to take down a lot better as well. So let's just really quickly triangulate this piece. But this one being very sloppy and fast. Again, I don't really care about this area. The one thing that we shouldn't forget that we altered that edge, the one that's being zoomed to the sleeves. So we do gotta readjust the sleeves a little bit. But first off, let's go ahead and bake this, just to make sure everything's okay. Now that's giving a nice bake as well. Now the problem would be if we go ahead and take a look at our sleeves. You will see right now that they don't match up anymore. And that's because we moved them. So we do gotta go ahead and fix that. I'm just going to select them both, go to face mode. Then let's take those border edges, border loops, I mean. Just go like that. Then with V, we can start snapping them up to there. Just double checking if those are all still in the same place because it's very important. Now, like this, you can go ahead and do one more export and let's bake that down. Now, if we take a look at both of them. You will see that they're nice and clean. 
we don't have any projection errors. If zooming in where they connect, it's also looking nice and clean. This does come with one problem. We now go here, we bake our ambient occlusion down. You will see that we have a bunch of weird stuff, and that's the intersection of the sleeve. So what we can do is we can go ambient occlusion and turn off ignore groups. Now when we bake, you will see that we don't have that. Although this does get rid of a lot of the ambient occlusion, so what you can do is you can do configure, let's set up all our bakes. We can do two ambient occlusions. The first one, I'm gonna go ahead and ignore groups turned off. And then the second one, we turn it on. Then we can later on combine those maps to kind of get the most best of both. Or you could simply just Always keep it on and kind of paint the errors out, but I like to have the flexibility of having both maps. I'm just gonna bake, and that's it. <laughs> 